So this video is uh, another layer into the Sniper Wolf lore. If you guys don't know, I covered Sniper Wolf against Jack's films, and I really feel like Jack doesn't have much of a moral high ground, but I understand from his bubble and his perspective, he feels like he does, and that's fair. We all have different standards that we hold people to. I just think the arguments against her were a little silly, like, oh, Sniper Wolf gives little to no um, transformative content. Like, I don't care about that stuff. I don't care. I think people watch people they want to watch. So if you want to watch Sniper Wolf, give the bare minimum. Like, that's why you're there. I really think, like, people would watch Hassan just breathe into a mic for 15 hours if they could. I don't think he's obligated to give much transformation to the content. But I understand that people have, like, an attachment to their work. And they want to at least be credited for the work that they do. And I can understand that perspective as well. I don't have that perspective. Um, I think I'm on the side, a different side of streaming and content creation where I'm like, yes, please talk about my content. Um, say my name if you want. But like just getting my face out there, I think is like great publicity. I'll take it. It's like a free billboard to me. Maybe I'm small enough as a content creator where I feel like that's why it's useful to me. But some people will say who are even smaller than me will say like, oh, no, this is like horrible for small content creators. I think that's interesting. You know, I don't have that perspective, but, you know, they do for their reasons. That's fine. This video, though, I started to watch it before. And this video is where my line is, where Sniper Wolf. Basically, I won't give it away, but the title is we interviewed as a Sniper Wolf's biggest victim. And from what I saw already, I was like, oh, this is Britney's line. So here's my line of where I'm like, this is not cool, bro. OK. And again, I, I don't know what to do much about it except just say like, hey, this is unethical according to me. But like everything is a construct. So you do you. But this made me literally see her much differently. Before, I just saw her as a clout shark, money chasing, like content creator. But with this video, I'm like, oh, now I didn't watch it all. So I, I won't watch the first like 15 minutes alone. So we'll see if I change my mind even as I'm watching, but let's check it out together. And I'll put the video in the chat so you guys can watch it on your own. This is from TBH. Hello and welcome to another episode of, to be honest, a show with a clown, a nerd, a duck, and a degenerate. And today we have our first ever guest on the To Be Honest podcast, Aziland. Hello. So you have a video coming out fairly soon um about your experience this was posted four days ago for context experiences with sniper wolf as i understand it so my very first interaction with her is was in 2016 so it's been a while wow yeah seven years yeah and that's actually that's actually when i first found out about her because i wasn't really i didn't watch much youtube back then i was in school I, my parents wanted me to be a doctor and uh, I just didn't have any time <laughs> for anything. Chose to be a YouTuber instead. Your first mistake. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, I wanted yeah. to get into medicine, to be fair, but yeah, YouTube pays more <laughs> and less stress. You needed to have intelligence for that. You're like, eh, I'll become yeah. a YouTuber. <laughs> True. Well, I guess let's give a little context on who uh, Azzyland is and how she relates to Sniper Wolf. What some of you who follow YouTube drama might be aware of is that Sniper Wolf has just had some some pretty serious drama with Jack's films that resulted in in uh, Sniper Wolf's channel being demonetized by YouTube. She showed up at Jack's house. Now, Jack had been pointing out Le um, Leah's lack of crediting her sources in her reaction content. In typical Jack's film style, he was doing something every day for an extended period of time. Now, from the outside, that looks like he's breaking YouTube's rule that he's harassing someone. But Jack does that no matter what it is ah. like he took a photo of twitter of the device picture that said something like uh, uh yeah. android <laughs> like twitter for android and he took a photo yeah. of that every day for a year and then the photo of the photo until it created this like mirror he's a little obsessed if you asked me some people felt like jack was like very obsessive and that's what his energy gives me as well is like he feels very unsafe to me but at the same time like most people feel unsafe to me if they are obsessive because then i'm like why who cares like let it go so when people don't let things go i'm like let it go and at the same time I'm okay with them standing their ground. I'm okay with them talking about the morals. I'm okay with them, like, like I have a feeling I'm going to be very okay with the way that she's handling this, but I don't know yet, you know? Wait, how did Sniper Wolf find his house? Okay, this is what I heard from Reddit. This is what I understand. And this is, like, the weirdest thing to me. How could Jack make this mistake? He used his home address as his business address. 
And I was like, what? Like, are you insane? This is one of the reasons, like, I don't do this because I'm like, yeah, I don't want my business address to be the same thing as my home address. Why would you do that? It's so you it has to be public record. What are you doing? And apparently that's how she found his home. That's why she said it wasn't doxing because she's like, I found it on the Internet because Jack was using his home address as his business address. And I'm like, why would you do that? Like, why would you literally do that? And so I'm so confused on how he decided to do that. I am so afraid of stalkers. Like, I don't even know how he did. Like, I just don't even know how he did it, you know. But either way, what are you going to do? In a mirror uh, hallway forever. And then at the end, he made a video that was like the many realities. So like he does these things that are an extended joke that only pays off later. And he started to do that to Sniper Wolf because they had, they had a couple negative interactions. And, uh, he was basically trying to teach her how to do transformative reaction content. And she could not abide this criticism. She started throwing more and more attention at him, calling him a loser, saying oh he can't he's trying to do what i do and he can't even do it and the more that she did that hold on but her attempt her intent was to hurt him her intent to showing up to her house his house was to hurt him how like i'm not condoning it doxing is bad don't do it don't go to people's houses right like don't go to people's houses you know what i mean don't do those things but i don't think like sniper wolf literally thought she was gonna hurt jack like it's not like she showed up with a gun or something she thought she was like getting the upper hand on him. She's kind of crazy. But YouTube beef does this. This is my my thing. If you belong to a cesspool of YouTubers who do shitty things to one another, they're always going to step up their game to one another, right? So I think that's the issue I have is that, it, again, like if you hang out with people like the prank streamers and then the pranks get bigger and bigger and bigger, it's like, yeah, you guys are fueling negative energy. So my whole thing with Jack is like, I think he contributed to not that I'm victim blaming, but I feel like he also look, if somebody made guys listen to the, to listen to the comparison. Okay. Listen to the internet. Jack's films, in my opinion, was obsessive with sniper. Wolf. she made, he made a video, like a channel dedicated right to her. That's like so weird. That's so cringe. If you have a problem with YouTube, take it out with YouTube. Like it's cringe to make a video compilation of her. And at the same time, this girl we're about to see has the right to talk about Sniper Wolf because she feels like, hey, this is something you should probably know. I don't know the story. I just know parts of it. I'm excited. DGG will always say like, Brittany's obsessed with Steven. I can't believe she's told socks about Destiny. Like Destiny's just a content creator. I'm not like, I literally used him in one thumbnail in like so many months. I never use his name in the titles. You know what I mean? I literally can talk about him. He's a content creator. I knew him for a moment. We've literally spent like five hours on the phone talking privately. And that's it. Like, I don't even really know him except what he's told me. Right. All the information I'm using to judge Steven is from his own words, but also like it's all over the internet. So if you don't want to judge him, don't, but he's a content creator, but people are like, you're obsessed. It's like, dude, then stop making Andrew Tate videos. Stop making fresh and fit videos. You can make content about Sniper Wolf without making it about Sniper Wolf. Like he could have made videos about Sniper Wolf and talked about YouTube's problems or Sniper Wolf's problems taking advantage of it, but he made a channel dedicated to making fun of Sniper Wolf. That's so cringe. Like there's something so inappropriate about that. It's like, what are you doing? That is inappropriate. But just talking about her, making videos about her, like that's fine. But it was the way that he like obsessed, like how inappropriate is this? And if his audience was very toxic, if his audience is very toxic, then this could have really hurt her. She could have gotten doxxed, stalked, killed on behalf of the audience. Like, why are we acting like this isn't a big deal from his perspective, too? And then she escalated it, which is even worse, and went to his home and then posted it on IG. She escalated it. Right? She escalated. That's insane. That's insane. You know what I mean? Like, how could you... How could you not think that that's insane? Like, literally, if his audience was in any way dangerous, it sounds like his audience is pretty chill, this could have been literally the worst thing. You know what I'm saying? Could you imagine? So again, if you're very upset with how one content creator is taking advantage of a platform, you should take it out with the platform. But in this circumstance, context matters. Let's be nuanced. I have a feeling we're going to learn, okay, that in this case, we're talking about something bigger than that, okay? Bigger than that. Let's talk about it because I'm excited, okay? 
Um, Crispy Lettuce says, hi from DGG. Hello. We are everywhere all the time, all at once. Wish you had decided to actually be friends with Destiny instead of going crazy. See? See, what is this? Are you guys all insane? What coke are you snorting? Like, this is what I'm saying. Like, do you see these people? Like, these people are trolling or slash some of them believe it. We're hiding you from the channel, bro. You're insane. Like, people are just insane. They become obsessed with the content creator. That's what I'm saying. DGG is a great example, right? Of like, if his audience turns on someone, they get death threats. You know how many bad emails I got from people saying I deserved my rape? You know how many bad messages I got saying like, I deserved everything that happened to me? Fine, troll all you want. But we're lucky that Jack's film's audience wasn't as toxic as DGG or some other content, like some other sphere because they would have went right for Sniper Wolf. And again, Sniper Wolf escalated it, which was bad. Okay. She escalated it, which was very bad. You know what I mean? I wouldn't say it was about Sniper Wolf necessarily. It was more about her content though. And like the podcast said, Jax Films is used to making kind of long runny jokes to pay off for after a while. Yeah, I just think he's weird. I think that's totally weird, you know, but let's watch this girl talk about her experience. Because again, I think we might find a new perspective of the differences between telling your story and being obsessed like Jax Films the more traction his reaction content got and now he's almost close to surpassing her he has something like 600,000 views on some of those and she's now dipping below a million so they're going like almost blow for blow oh almost like he did it for views oh on reaction content I was gonna say as somebody who also does reaction content like if he did that to me I would be like you know what fair like I know my content is shit and I'm willing to say it is you credit your stuff though like you're like the good version, or well, far and, beyond I the mean, good version like, of Sniper like Wolf. Like, I feel like I'm like slightly maybe better, but like I, I you're just I being didn't modest. Consider, <laughs> I, I didn't consider his like points to be honest before that, and now I don't get this. Yeah, I don't get this point at all. Because sometimes I'll watch a content creator, and someone's like, "Oh, I'm surprised you watch them. They don't they don't have very in you know interesting things to say." And I'm like, "Really? I really like them." But again, we're all like, oh, "What is this piece of hair? Should I make crazy?" We all like different people for different reasons. And that's the point. If you have a problem with how a content creator is making content, take it out with the platform. We have con Can you imagine we have one life on earth and we're all going to die and you're going to spend your life taking away the one thing that makes this person happy? Even if they're a piece of shit, like, aren't you being a piece of shit? Like, what are you doing here? Now I'm like, okay, I want to come back to YouTube and make things more transformative. So I, I have like a little bit of a plan on what to do. But it's it's like she should have just like agreed and laughed it off, done a bingo game on herself, and then like <laughs> it, things would be okay. <laughs> yeah, Wait, I was gonna say. What was that guy's name? Matt. Was his name Matt? What was that guy's name who used to do inf informational top ten videos? And somebody went through and said, "Hey, you're not crediting any of these sources," and they tried to cancel him overnight. So him and his editor spent like forty eight hours just collecting all of the data and putting it in the description. There was a time on YouTube when this wasn't normal. Somebody gave me credit the other day on stream saying, I think it's so nice that Brittany like puts the links to the videos in the chat and stuff. But like, you need to know that I never used to do that before. This is something I had to adapt to and change to the culture changing. This was never normal. And even Jack's films admitted that only some of Sniper Wolf's videos didn't have links, but some did. And then they got upset that she didn't link to the literal original creator. But like, who does? Like on TikTok, right? So again, I just feel like there's something weirdly obsessive about him. I don't get, right? Okay. As he, like in your videos, to be fair, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, I don't like frequently watch you. Uh, okay. but I don't <laughs> My audience is- Yeah, I think Matthew uh, Santorini. I think that was him. Was he bald? Young girls. I watched a couple of your videos and you actually say more than like three syllables for the entire video. So yeah, I would definitely say you're like leagues above Sniper Wolf's content because you actually add- even some though the, kind of input the bar is on the just, floor. But. <laughs> yeah, like Mariana Trench Deep. So, you know, you don't just open your mouth and go, wow, that's crazy, guys. I mean, I, I swear I swear in some videos, she's actually reused the same reaction for like different kinds of videos and stuff as well. It's just incredibly lazy content. Like you guys said, this content isn't meant for us. And um, But I, in order to understand what type of... Co um, what did the quartering do too? Remember when the quartering went so obsessive on the girl who plays the marvel girl miss marvel is that her name what's the blonde lady's name quartering did the same thing jeremy he became obsessed he made so many videos about her and i'm like dude 
make other content. Like, look, I get covering Andrew and Andrew and Andrew Tate. Why does his name not sound like it should be Andrew? I understand covering Tate. I understand covering the news. I understand co covering Fresh and Fit. But be careful not to become a YouTuber whose whole content is after one other content creator because that is the epitome of lazy. And if Jax Films is making money off his second channel, that's all about Sniper Wolf. I think that's borderline. He better be giving that money to charity. Brie Larson, that was her name. Yeah, good job. Brie Larson, you guys are so good with names. That's the problem, right? Again, you do you, do your thing. But again, I try really hard, hard to diversify while understanding I live in a bubble on the internet as well. And I love to cover my favorites. Like Papa Gut and I, we like to react to each other or send each other clips because like we're friends, but we're also trying to like, hey, react to my stuff. It's like fun. So like we reacted to him the other day. It was a great video. It was a great reaction, right? We had a lot of fun. So in some ways you want to react to the same people all the time because like they're, you know, you want to help boost numbers. And then on the other side of it, you also want to like not be obsessed. Yes. Oh my God. Thunderfoot and Anita Sarkeesian. That era, I've talked to Thunderfoot in private. That era was nuts. He didn't even know I was there. I was in the room with a couple of friends who knew him and I was like, oh my God, look at Thunderfoot. Like it's so weird that how obsessed they get. They get so obsessed. Oh my gosh. That's okay. Abba and Preach almost never put the links to their reactions. I know. Sometimes I really go to the description. I'm like, really? No link, guys. But you know what? It is what it is, right? Like, I'm like, eh, who cares? And then sometimes they're really good about it. Again, and by the way, think about all the times Ab and Preach and H3 and H3 have made content about each other. Don't act like this doesn't boost views. This is about views and money. Again, I don't know why people are all pretending like, oh, I have the moral high ground. I'm just trying. You know what I mean? Please. Okay. Please. Marco says, it's great when I'm watching you, Brittany Ricci, reacting and issues to me to bubbles and issues while giving your opinion streamers that are quiet while reacting and cursing at the content is unethical money. I don't care. That, I mean, I appreciate you being here. But see, I don't care as a viewer. Sometimes, like, I, I just want to feel, I want them to listen and then tell me their opinion. Like, as a viewer, I think I'm much, I think I am fit more the stereotype than not. Because the majority of People are watching Sniper Wolf, which means they're fine with her reactions. Remember, if you want a content creator to overreact, you are a niche. Hassan and Sniper Wolf, through NXQC, who people claim never react, have the highest streaming co communities or watching communities. So we are in the minority, not me. I'm more normie than everybody else. We are more, it is more normie to literally watch people eat cereal and barely react than to not. And I need us to pay attention to that detail. Jax Films needs to pay attention. Hassan gets this criticism all the time for not reacting enough. Think about it. Think about it. They are the majority. You know what I mean? And so for me, I'm like, I'm good with it. Obviously. You know what I mean? Copying Sniper Wolf had done. I did watch the video that Azzy made and then the video that Leah made that had the exact same thumb and the exact same title just to see like did she copy it word for word and there were differences within the videos and it was very striking to me what those differences were what were they because I've never seen those videos <laughs> the difference is your character so let me give one example as he would basically work in a little useful piece of information or something that kind of was like the moral take about what she was reacting to. And then sniper wolves would always be something that defaulted to humiliation and bullying. So for example, one of them was, um, you were looking at, I think the title of the video was people who thought they had great security. <laughs> I can't believe this was a viral video, <laughs> but that's the title of one. So it was, um, you were reacting to like poorly locked up things and ATMs that had tape on them, stuff like that. And, uh, you were looking at a bike that had been locked up to the sign outside of a cafe yeah. and your take on this, you assumed the point of view of the person who was about to have their bike stolen. Hmm. And you were, you were talking. I never knew this face. Like, I think she looks sort of familiar, but I don't think I ever saw her. I was in 2016. I was on the super leftist progressive side of YouTube. So unless you were making political commentary, I was like busy protesting and stuff in 2016. I was like cleaning up streets with BLM like that was Seattle Brittany so she was definitely not paying attention to Sniper Wolf even though I knew who she was for sure I think I even talked about her a bit because like I was playing um Overwatch so I kind of knew who she was but I wasn't like I, I never watched Sniper Wolf as like a fan you know what I mean 
So I definitely didn't know this girl. To them about how you could avoid this happening. So you you assumed the role of the victim in this scenario. You were like, mm -hmm. all right, guys, so so here's how you would lock this up. And you added a little detail of, okay, so there's two ways this is wrong. He's locked it to a sign that can be moved. And also they've locked it to the wheel, which allows the thief to basically pick up the bike and walk it away and they can take the wheel off later. You're like, you have to lock it to the bike frame. And then Leah's version is completely from the perspective of the bike thief. She's like, <laughs> she's like free bike. And she, her hands are like, she <laughs> imagines herself stealing the bike. You see her like acting out, taking the bike. And then she's like, oh and imagine God. that idiot when he walks out and he's like, where's my bike? Ha <laughs> ha. She's completely from the perspective of the criminal. I mean, she is transforming the content and making it different then. Oh, that's sort of interesting. Is she copying the girl's video? But or is it a different video because she's looking because like I will react to a video and then I'll send it to somebody else and be like, hey, you should react to this. This seems up your alley. Like, oh hey, this seems like something you should react to. Like I will send my YouTuber friends, because again, I want us all to grow. I will send you links and be like, you should react to this. I never think like I want to be the only one who made this react content. I don't know if it's different in different circles. Like, cause I don't see my other YouTubers as competition. You know what I mean? I'm not that person. At all. So <laughs> oh it's I a thought clear... like you. I thought you were going to say that she just like open her mouth and be like, wow, guys, that's crazy. But yeah, that's <laughs> even worse. Yeah, it's worse. It's worse. So when you think about what this content is doing, and this is why oh as, as adults, this, this is not for us. The content is training, training people at the age who are trying to figure out how to, how to have like a cool reaction to things. You know, you're trying to develop a personality mm. that's going to be that's going to be uh it's going to make you popular it's going to be the acceptable way to react to things i think we're basically base babysitting uh the internet's kids it's like when mom and dad want to go do their own thing we babysit their kids for them i think it's very <laughs> nanny like so so my comparison is like I which nanny most youtubers to be fair which nanny would you hire do you want to hire the nanny who's going to teach the kids how to lock up their bike properly or see this is a weird video i wonder if i should find one that summarizes the story and like this is a w already so weird. I think I was just raised in a bubble that said like other people shouldn't raise your kids, especially not celebrities. Right? I'm confused. Are they moralizing her reactions? I get that. We just watched Philly and make fun of this other kid for so long. Like, yeah, whatever. Like, it's been, he's making a joke, but he's taking a moral high ground. But I think his moral high ground is silly. Like, you know what I mean? In a way. Because he's moralizing filth, which means he's moralizing like probably mental health or some sort of relationship with the consciousness. So I don't know. I don't know. You know. Mm, let's see. Marco says Hassan watching counterpoint contrapoints and Moon Cat's videos are robbing them viewers. No, you just named contrapoints. One of the biggest content creators. She can fucking survive, bro. And also, who cares? No offense. If you don't like Contra, you'll watch Hassan watch Contra. But if you like Contra, you'll go to Contra's video and like that video and everything. Mid-sized content creators would get bigger with those viewers. Uh, we're going on YouTube, but the average viewer do not get time to watch a long time for content an hour. Okay, well, twice. I mean, you don't watch it twice. If you like the content creator, you'll go watch them directly. But if you just like the content creator who's reacting to the content, you were never going to check them out anyways. And the whole point is not to send viewers to the video that's being reacted to, but to send viewers to the channel so they'll watch other videos. The hope when other, when reaction channels react to your content, the hope should not be that people will watch the video they reacted to. The hope should be that they'll come to my channel and subscribe for more content. YouTube doesn't care if one of your videos goes viral. I've had multiple videos hit a million views. It never mattered because the content people came back to wasn't similar enough to the video that they mostly liked. So they never stayed. You have to either make the same content consistently to, so the audience knows what they're getting or you have to be like a streamer so people know they're getting you, the streamer, right? Which is what I'm trying now and seeing if that's like a little bit better for my content so people know what they're getting. But again, the hope as a content creator shouldn't be that your one video will get views. It will be that people will come and subscribe to your channel and stay for other videos. Because again, you want other videos. You know what I mean? Other people should definitely raise your kids. Wait, should definitely raise your kids? People raising their own kids is how racists are made. Pfft. Well, you know. 
Homeschooling should be illegal, Dagnabbit. Stop it right now. Marco says other people's artistic work should not be revenue for quiet streamers. Lazily attempt to vanish from popularity. I'm not against React content if there's something uh, new there. No, yeah, we just disagree. I don't care. I think like it's fine. I don't know. I can't like hold my breath. We're all going to die. Okay. Like nothing matters. But also like that's what everyone is doing. At the end of the day, like we're all just using other people's content to kind of make content. Now, if that ever stops, I feel confident because you guys know I, you watch the podcasts. I know how to make my own content without using React content. But that is what everyone is doing. A lot of commentators, a lot of radio hosts, a lot of news pundits, a lot of Tucker Carlson's would never have anything to talk about if they didn't watch other people's content. Do you know what I mean? Like half of the segments that come out in even regular news, The View, the show The View is basically reacting to other people's lives and stories. You know what I mean? The transformation, yes, comes from the commentary, but also there are viewers who want to watch content creators who barely re like react. So then it's capitalism and it's all about what the market calls for. The market calls for Hassan, the market calls for Sniper Wolf, and that's the end of it. That's just the reality teach the kids how to steal a bike like you're basically saying transform the market which basically is saying how do i change people on a whole oh i can't let me attack the content creator what you go with the mary poppins the one who's like here's how to do it right guys and then who quickly tries to make it fun so so as he lands you know she's she tries to always bring it back to a joke and a meme and keep it flowing but there is always this little detail that's useful to it i wonder if sniper wolf would admit the same that she's making her content for kids to no, enjoy it. and no, she is the babysitter i mean she would probably deny it right i'm guessing i've seen her deny it i've seen her say like oh she has yeah yeah she has or maybe i'm like yeah no i'm pretty sure i saw her make a tweet once and nine it but i don't know so she knows that they're kids but what would she say that the demographic is i think it just depends on whatever she thinks somebody is like bitching at her for like i i, 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 see. I think okay hold on Apparently, Nerd City has a better, concise... Yeah. Oh! Oh my god, am I dumb? Wait, did I watch... No, I watched... Did I watch this video and I don't remember? Why did it say I started at five minutes in? Wait, did... I didn't watch this, did I? Let's watch it and find out. Apparently, this is a more concise story about the background. So let's watch this because I think the podcast isn't showing enough point to point and, I, and I'm curious um, if there is, like, a more concise... Okay. So this is from Nerd City. I will link it in the chat. Let's check this video out. SS Sniper Wolf. Ooh, is that too and loud? And Azzyland. Is this audio too loud? to be compared. But of course that won't stop their viewers, or even YouTube itself, from lumping them together every day of their lives. Whether stuffing Sniper Wolf videos into Azzy's trending topic, or just playing their videos back to back and causing mm. widespread confusion. For most of their careers, people have told them they look like sisters. They're not. And now, even friendship seems out of the question. Always be yourself, unless you suck. Then pretend to be somebody else. And that's on Azzyland. <laughs> Both are accused of lying mm. and stealing and trying to be the other one. Very interesting. Mm. I wonder who's telling the truth. One woman is someone who nobody else seems to have anything bad to say about. And the other one. Everyone hates. Both women are enormously successful influencers whose channels and brands and fan bases were set up to fight to the death. You're not special for winning a game with someone who you know was never playing. She could have killed you. She had every right. You just caught her off guard tonight. I forgot about this lady. She is, was a less funny sniper wolf. Oh, okay. How, oh, here's the question for my audience. Do you think, because I kind of feel like, look, if it's meant to hit mainstream, it will hit mainstream. And I consider sniper wolf like mainstream, right? And I feel like when you get that big and you're that popular for that long, you're doing something actually right for the industry that you're in. And then you can try to moralize it all you want. But it's hard when I all I see is like smaller content creators or people who feel like they're owed more success somehow, not feeling like they get it. But that doesn't make sense to me, right? So when I see this, I'm like, okay, yeah, Sniper Wolf's just like capitalizing on a system and how it works. And honestly, like if she could link people's videos, that'd be great. But otherwise, like I feel like her commentary is exactly what her audience wants. Like lowbrow, simple reactions. You know, 
like Ray William Johnson used to do jokes. Now his TikToks are very different. But when I was watching Ray a billion years ago, he would just do lowbrow comedy, a few dad jokes here and there. And my brother and I used to watch him every day at lunch. That was like our ritual. We would watch Ray William Johnson. And that was like our bonding time as like bros. Okay. Everyone does it differently, but audience members get to decide what they want. And audience members get to decide in droves if it's going to be popular. That's why the content creators adapt. So I just want that, you know, I just want us to be able to look at it from that perspective as well. Come and join us on this episode of Nerdline as we talk to Azra and hear one side of this story for the very first time. Let's I never really talk about this because I feel like there's something wrong with me, where to some degree, I lack empathy. There are a lot of things I don't care about, things I probably should care about that I don't. Kind of like if you didn't wake up tomorrow, I also wouldn't care. I would just move on with my day. When something's useless, you throw it away. You know who else has no empathy? Psychopaths. I truly think that this is psychopath behavior. Some similarities between Azra Hey, I appreciate the honesty and transparency, bro. That's kind of nice. And Leah just can't be helped. But others were manufactured intentionally. But more plants that I'm killing. A luscious, well taken care of plant. Hey man, can I copy your homework? Yeah, but change it up a little so the teacher don't notice. This is a mirror. And this is my favorite mirror. Finally got it and it doesn't really go with the house. I like mirrors. There may never be a better example. Yeah, that's pretty creepy, bro. So everybody just likes to harass everybody on YouTube. What I'm learning so far is everybody likes to harass everybody on YouTube. Jax Films make a, makes a whole channel dedicated to this one woman, crazy, obsessive. Sniper Wolf copies content, dress, verbatim, mirror, verba obsessive. This is the most obsessive bubble on YouTube. I am so glad we are not a part of this bubble. They're just obsessed. Everybody's just obsessed. This is so inappropriate. Be careful what you wish for. Cut a piece of your hair, no clickbait or fake. Okay guys, let me just grab the scissors. Here goes nothing. Okay guys. Here goes Let's nothing. Let's go girl, do it. I did it! You didn't say it had to be a lot, but I did, that's actually quite a lot. Rip hair. Who wants to clone me? Oh my gosh, she would be so evil. I know it, she'd be my evil clone. Do it, do it, clone me, do it, clone me, do it, clone me. Whoa. One time, this guy pinged me on- Okay, wait, I wanna say something too. I was watching Nathaniel Drew talk about this with another YouTuber who makes the same kind of content. And this does happen in other bubbles where this like feels very deliberate, right? And Nathaniel Drew talked to this other YouTuber about it. I forgot who it was. Another famous guy in the same sphere. And he said, you know, my audience, like our audiences turn on each other. Like if they make this similar video within a month of each other, people are like, you copied so-and-so, you copied. But when you're both in the same genre, you guys tend to watch the same videos. And I thought that was an interesting thing to consider. Maybe I'll show that video too. This doesn't just happen in this sphere. It happens when you're covering kind of like the same stuff, which is kind of exciting because if you were a part of politics like I, I was, I really should get back into it. But you want to hear all of your favorite political people talk about the same story because you want their perspective, right? You will watch the same story a thousand times as long as it's by different people because you want to get different vibes from it, right? Oh, like, what do you think about it? What do you think about it? That's the same how I feel about reaction content. It's like you'll watch the same video a billion times to see different people react to it. And I think there's something about that that's interesting. You know what I mean? Or if you're in the self-help part of YouTube, you'll watch 10 guys say how to save your first thousand or how to how to find your identity, how to be authentic. You'll watch 20 videos on how to be authentic. You'll watch 100 videos on how to put on the perfect mascara. Come on, girls. In the makeup guru days when I was obsessed, I probably watched a thousand videos on how to wear mascara. Why? Because you want to watch that person put on mascara. Twitter. And he was like, nerd, when are you going to make a video again? And they were wearing neon glasses like mine. I see that sometimes. Like, I didn't invent these glasses. You can buy them. I just had to look at their account. And it was like, oh, whoa, they've got a lot of followers. And I clicked over to their YouTube channel. And they had 3 million subscribers. Okay. I click on a video. And it was like, dun, 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 dun. it's the music that I use. Or something very similar. And it was in the dark. And they had the glasses on and it was like the beginning of one of my videos but they what... were running out of ideas eu vou usar o pronome ela porque é uma mulher que se veste de mulher usa maquia maybe we're all... maybe it is a simulation and there's a youtuber who's doing the same thing i'm doing out there guys let's find him 
Is it a boy or a girl? Let's find out. But it makes you wonder who came first. Is there even an original idea? Because a lot of us copy each other's thumbnails. We're like, oh, what works for so-and-so? Do what they're doing. Oh my God, what works for them? Do what they're doing. Not a lot of YouTubers who go mainstream care about being quote unquote unique, guys. All they care about is making this a career. So. They were speaking in Portuguese because they were a Brazilian channel. They clearly had taken more than just a little bit of inspiration. And I didn't try to, I didn't speak out about it until now. I haven't mentioned it at all. When that would cross the line for me would be if they felt like so guilty about getting busted on that, that they wanted me to not exist anymore. And they started trying to figure out how to erase me so that they could do even better. Now, I think you experienced that last part. You've got someone who's taken inspiration from you. They switched over from just an homage account or stealing from you to feeling so guilty as an imposter of you that they don't want you to exist anymore. <laughs> you have the nightmare version of, of what I haven't experienced. What was it that crossed the line for you where it went from something that you could accept? Like clearly there's this other female creator who thinks I'm cool, who's taking ideas from me to something that started to mess with your head. Like what was the difference for you? I genuinely don't care about this. Like anybody who knows me in real life, like I share ideas, I like, help them out like i would even have sent her the photoshop files as long as she was like nice about it <laughs> like remember to always be yourself unless you suck then pretend to be somebody else and that's on as you land <laughs> when this person started pointing mm, this is true it's like mr beast he gives away like tons of information a lot of people share how they do things i've had youtubers call me and be like hey how much did you get for this sponsorship and i'm like oh this is how much i got so we could all like haggle prices together and like sometimes it's against your contracts so or read your contract. Um, but I didn't have a contract with this particular company in the same way. Anyways, um, some people, you know, they they like I call Papa. I call I text Papa Gut on Discord. And I'm like, hey, how'd you do this? I want to learn how to do that. Or I'll text Kyla and be like, hey, how'd you do this? I want to do this. Like you're just getting ideas from people in your sphere that want to see you do well or hopefully want to see you do well. Now, if they don't want to see you do well that that's the weird part because I think there's an audience for everyone I I seriously believe like there is an audience for every single content creator who wants to be one if you find your audience and you're worth following but some people get jelly some people get envious let's see how sniper wolf let's see how they make the story I think they're probably right like I have a feeling sniper wolf is incredibly jealous and worried about this woman getting any of her attention but let's see Let's see. Pointing fingers towards me and started bullying me and trying to bring me down. How oh, whoa, whoa, wait. Bullying me and. Okay. Leah, Sniper Wolf, kind of annoying when people compare my cosplay mirror selfies to highly edited pro pics. Sorry, I don't photoshoot my boobs and waist. Does she, does she have real boobs though? Are you talking about Azilam? It's misleading. I've seen so many people online who look unrecognizable in real life. That's what, who cares? And if it. And if it's someone who does cosplay, they shouldn't even be a part of the lovely community of cosplay. Yep. What? No. I hate gatekeep. I hate all of you. I hate everybody. What is this gatekeeping? Like, girl, don't be like, this is so no Sniper Wolf hyper edits all her photo. When was this? When was this taken? In 2016? Maybe then she didn't. But Sniper Wolf obviously has a bunch of like, she obviously doesn't, she obviously does stuff, right? Am I crazy? She looks so photoshopped to me. I assume there's a filter on her videos. I could be crazy though. Trying to bring me down. How were they accusing you? Like, what did that look like from your side of things? It was a, a lot of things. The very beginning, it actually started off with none of the, that happening. It was just like a few mean tweets, uh, which kind of painted us as like enemies when it didn't need to be like that. I don't have any enemies. So, and then painted us as like enemies when it didn't. Okay, what am I seeing here? Fuck, I cannot tell the difference. This is obviously this girl, Azzy. This is Leah. Who's this middle girl? I can't tell. Is that Leah or Azzy? It looks like Azzy has the better costume, obviously. Um, looks like she tried harder. She's got the headset. Well, Leah doesn't even have the headset. Yeah, this whoever this is, this is great. Whoever the two on the left are, they're really great. Didn't need to be like that. I don't have any enemies. So, and then it turned into taking every idea did, did well. 
but because they had more following than me, uh, their oh. video would just. You're looking at me again. Ugh, I always do this. Get more views. Wait, I don't get it. Hold on, repeat. I don't have any enemies. So, and then it turned into taking every idea that did well, hmm. but because they had more following than me. Okay. Even copied her dress. Oh, I get it. This is what's scary for Leah not to tell her viewers. Because she obviously copied this dress. Like, she did it after Azzy. This is, this is what's super, for me, unethical. It's a lie. I hate liars. Okay. This is why I don't like liars, okay? Because she, is Leah letting her, this is, is this Sassy Wolf's, like, see how it says her TikTok name on top? Is that her real TikTok? She even copied her dress. I think this is probably a fan account, maybe. But she's saying, like, as he copied the dress. But obviously, that video came out before. Uh, their video would just get more views. And so people would see their video first and then assume that their video was mm. first. Uh, hold on. He goes too fast. He needs to fucking slow video would the just fuck get down. more views. And so people would see their video first and then assume that their video was first. Okay. Okay, these are very different, but the same. I think this is a bad example because she's in the thumbnail. She's in the thumbnail. This looks like normal. This looks like pretty generic. I mean, the yellow is the same and the background is kind of the same, but this is like, there are, there are formulas, guys, right? Like there are, um, like every beauty guru kind of looked the same at one time. So I don't know. This one's a weird example, but I'll, okay. This one's a weird example. They're different thumbnails, but the same thumbnails, but they're different. Huge Halloween costume try on from Wish. Trying on cheap Halloween costumes from Wish. Yeah. Okay, so, so far I'm not convinced. That's like, yeah, pretty generic, normal. Okay, creepy TikTok videos you should not watch. Creepy TikToks you should not watch at night before you sleep. Okay. Okay, pretty normal. The, um. Oh, no. Did it rewind it? Oh, 10 seconds is a long time. Why is YouTube jumping so freaking far, bro? Okay, that one's different. Oh, this one. I would say this one's a good example because like that's a pretty unique thumbnail, right? Yeah, I think this one's kind of a good example because this is a really unique thumbnail. The rest look like every other thumbnail I've seen. But like this looks kind of unique. Don't push the mystery box into the water. Don't push the mystery box into the pool. Um, I think using the same, well, they're not using the same pool picture. Um, I don't know. This one's fine, I guess. This one's a little strange, but also both these thumbnails suck. They both suck at thumbnails. How about that? Both of them suck at thumbnails. Okay, this one, okay. So I think she could have used a different photo. Um, but this was in October of 2018 and this was in June of 2019. Okay. Okay. I, get, I would be annoyed. You know what I mean? I would be annoyed. I think the part that bothers her is that Ezzy was accused of the one copying. Yeah, that's the fucked up part. Leah has an obligation, according to Britney's values, to tell her audience, like, hey, I my videos are after. But if she plays it up and is like, oh, my God, I can't believe Azzy's, like, copying me, that's fucked up. Because that's the issue I'm seeing. Because everyone, everyone has a generic thumbnail thing, right? Like, so I'm okay with, like, the generic thumbnail thing. I don't care about that. Because they they're fucking stupid thumbnails. They're lazy thumbnails. They're both – they're all very generic. Whatever, right? No big deal. But what is generic? Like, you know, when you're in a per certain part of YouTube, you like, you want the, you the thumbnails to look similar. I try to make my thumbnails look similar to like Cinnamon Toast Ken and um, uh, ABBA and um, Cody Ko because we're all in the same sphere. So all of our thumbnails should look like the same because we do commentary slash reaction. You don't want it. You don't want my thumbnails to look like the beauty gurus because that would invite a different audience, right? So you do want your thumbnails to look similar, like Papa Gut and I kind of have similar thumbnails. Like you want to have something for the vibe so you bring in the right audience, right? 
So I'm not completely upset about it, but I am upset if Leah intentionally allowed people, intentionally allowed people, right? Intentionally allowed people to think that as he was copying her. Britt says, I feel like these shitty over the top thumbnails are intentional. Like Mr. Beast thumbnail looks so weird and unsettling, but it clicks. Bro, I always think, oh, I shouldn't like over edit anything. Mr. Beast is literally like over edit. Kids, I don't, but my audience is in kids. That's why I don't over edit. See, I don't want children in my audiences. So I'm very careful about my thumbnails because I do not want a child audience, right? The content creators I'm used to, we all have older audiences, right? So I don't want my skin to be, Mr. Beast does that thing where he over edits his skin to look like a doll almost. It's so scary, but it brings in children for some reason. And I don't know why, maybe because it looks young. I don't know what it is, but I don't like it, but I don't do it for this reason. You know what I'm saying? So it's interesting. See, that's crazy. August 12th, August 8th, 18th. Yeah, this is crazy. See, that's crazy. That is the weirdest thumbnail. Okay, different couple, which helps. Different couple, which helps. Um, May 3rd, October 2018. So, okay, see how this was May 3rd and then this was October? I also need to know who was making the thumbnails. Was Snapper Wolf making the thumbnails? Or who's making the thumbnails, right? Because these are different couples doing the same bra hack. That would drive me nuts. It's more than that. It's like you don't... Okay, this is the part I'm interested in. ...deserve to live because you've, you've stolen from this person and ruined their life. I'm like... I didn't do anything to their life. The comments were that dramatic that they were telling you like KYS and stuff. It's always like that, guys. No matter what content creator you go against, absolutely, that's pretty normal. But that's messed up. Zoo says Wolf has a friend who does the same thumbnails and titles as her. They even do videos together sometimes. That is pretty common, right? So, and now there's automated systems, systems some YouTubers use to make the thumbnails. Like, I get it, okay? I get it. So again, this is the part I'm more interested in. Yeah. Yeah, it was that. It's that. Bad. You're not special for winning a game with someone who you know was never playing. She could have killed you. She had every right. You just caught her off guard tonight. To me, I'm like, copying is not a big deal. I feel like it doesn't become as big of a deal when you're an adult, but. I it's also the difference is Sniper Wolf is telling them that it's a problem. That. So. Yeah. That's fucked up. That's fucked up. Look, uh, February 20th, 2018, June 21st, 2018. If Sniper Wolf is doing this, this is where I get pet peeved. It's the outright lying. It's the right out like slander. It's like sending. That's why I don't like liars lying. I'm like, don't send your audience after people, bro. Don't do that. That's so weird. And Jack's films did send his audience. They were nicer after Sniper Wolf in a different way, right? This woman has made so much content made about her. Uh, bigger content creators have covered this. Like, he should have gone after her for this. This is legit. The other stuff, oh, she's not being transformative enough. Who cares? Like, that is not a real reason to go after somebody, in my opinion. Go after YouTube for not taking the content down. But in this case, this is Sniper Wolf doing this. And that part, for me, this is my line. It's not just that these fans notice and they're organically being like, oh, I saw Sniper Wolf's video first and now I see Azzy's video and this is the same. And they're reaching their own conclusion that you had copied her. What is your opinion on it? Okay, let's talk about this person since a lot of people ask me about her. Does she copy me? And a lot of people think she is me. Today we're gonna be rating my lookalikes. Wait, hold up. These videos look familiar. I'm gonna have to give that one a five. <laughs> She created the narrative that you had cloned her yeah. when it was the other way. Mm, wait, hold on. A lot of people ask me about her. Does she copy me? And a lot of people think she is me. Today we're going to be rating my lookalikes. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, I don't mean to be so fucking autistic about this, but... Wolf's video first and now I see Azzy's video and this is the same and they're reaching their own conclusion that you had copied her. What is your
opinion on it. Okay, let's talk about this person since a lot of people ask me about her. Does she copy me? And a lot of people think she is me. Okay, so she didn't say yes. That clip does not say anything. Wait, do you think this is me? Well, yeah, you don't have glasses on, but still. Okay, Sniper Wolf says, this isn't me. Okay, so Sniper Wolf in that moment did not call her a copycat, did not make an accusation. Today we're going to be rating my lookalikes. Wait, hold on. And then she called it a lookalike, not a copycat. So, wait, what's happening? Sniper Wolf isn't saying she's a copycat. She said she's my lookalike. Let's see if she says something more incriminating. Incriminating. Wow, Azzyland got crazy views. Six days ago, one million views. Damn. Uh, these videos look familiar. I'm gonna have to give that one a five. <laughs> <laughs> she created the narrative that you had cloned her. Yeah. When Where is the... Ooh, I don't like this editing, right? Did this editing imply that? I'm not getting the... Im mm. I guess the implication in that moment was... Yeah, okay, there was an implication. I get it. Okay, I see the implication. I get it. Sorry. Sniper Wolf is saying in that moment, oh, this looks so much like me without saying, actually, she made these videos before I even made these videos. Okay, there was an implication. Now I see it. And it was the other way around. Yeah, I have fans, like, I guess, playing both sides and, like, messaging me and telling me that she, she's DMing them and, like, she's kind of, like, encouraging people to hate on me. I think, like, that's very manipulative because she's in a position of power and she knows that. Very, very sad. Wait, very sad. You say that because she's been copying my videos and thumbnails for months. Why don't you check my older videos? I've been doing these thumbnails and vids first and longer. Please get your facts straight. By messaging. Is that, is that Leah? Children that they'll be starstruck. They'll believe her. They'll be starstruck. Mm. They've been deputized by her. Yeah, that's really weird. That's like super malicious and vindictively weird and petty. Ooh, Sniper Wolf, not looking great. See, this was the reason to go after Sniper Wolf. This is crazy. This is crazy. Or to go intervene in this and to let you know to, uh, you know, quit copying her or whatever. So they've been like kind of dragged into drama mm. to harass you. Have you ever done anything like that in reverse? Did you ever tell your fans like, go do the same thing to her? Never. I actually tell them not to. Like, I, I, I literally say like, like, please don't do that. Because like, I do have like fans who do kind of instigate because they're like. Hmm. <clears throat> My son used to watch her, but gravitated more towards Azzy. I personally believe it's because he could tell through her BS persona. Okay, so they're, this, these are nice subscribe. These are fan subscribers. Firing back uh, what like hmm. her fans are doing. And I, I always say to them, I'm like, the truth always comes out. You don't need to create mm. bad karma for yourself. Mm -hmm. Well, this I guess this is part of the truth coming out, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought it'd come out on its own, but sometimes you have to stand up for yourself. Just to give people an idea, like what was the audiences are very dumb. You have to like spell it out to people. No offense, bigger audiences, larger audience, especially kids. You know what are you gonna do? The scale of this kind of harassment of you, like how many short form videos were you seeing that were accusing you of copying her? This became like a really big issue as soon as TikTok became popular. And it started blowing up on there because anybody can make a short form video and things can go really viral on there. Like there was fans that had like a hundred followers, they would post it. And within the end of the week, they would have like 5 million views on it. And that really encouraged people to, to make these videos. And I think it accumulated like people just like hating. And it was hundreds and hundreds of fans making videos. Yeah, anonymous accounts. I can't say anonymous. <laughs> anonymous. But, anonymous. That is weird, bro. That is so crazy. No, no, no. My audience is not. You guys are not stupid. You are smart and beautiful and you're so good. And I love you so much. <laughs> no, but seriously, listen to me. OK. Like. This this would piss me off, but also I'm glad she's talking about it because, again, great example of like you should talk about it. Right. Because it's too interesting not to. And it does paint a very honest truth about Sniper Wolf that is so much more interesting than her being non-reactive during reaction film. Who fucking cares? Oh my God. This is so much more interesting. This is interpersonal and fun and about the human psyche. And this is about like, ooh, like what do we do with content creators like this? This is interesting. So, okay. Now, yeah, yeah, don't leave me. Yeah, yeah. Don't unsubscribe. I love, don't leave me. I'm, I have borderline. I have abandonment issues. Don't leave me. I'm just kidding. Whoa. <laughs>
That is a joke. That is a joke. <laughs> but literally, I appreciate this girl talking about this because this stuff is fascinating. Not <laughs> anonymous. Anonymous. Yeah, there's words that there's words that catch me like that too. Yeah. Um, I'm for it. <laughs> but basically, like, and that's the way that TikTok. Mm. That's part of how it became so popular is they artificially give everyone their 15 minutes of fame. So when you have a new account, if you're just some kid who's only made like one or two videos ever, the odds of you having a viral video within your first few are pretty high because they want people to basically start to feel famous on that app. They do that in a way that like YouTube doesn't do. So ah! you had, so basically like a trend started on TikTok of a few. Look at that. Oh, you guys can't see it because my stupid video. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, oh, my bad. Hold on. So it says, um, hold on. It so says, you had, so basically. It says, no hate, Azzy. Um, just wanted to do this trend. So I've run into issues like this. And again, I'm not too mad at the audience for it. I'm more concerned with like the content creators and how they're going to handle it. But I've had the same thing happen where like the audience doesn't even like they don't really hate me. They're just like trolling. So it is what it is. I ignore it or I block people. But it is one of those things where it can be a lot, especially if you have like thousands, thousands and thousands of messages coming at you. But and I, I do think in that moment, it is the content creator's job to say something like if I ever got big enough where like hundreds of my commenters were going and saying bad things, I'd be like, you better fucking knock it off. I would like block all those people from my channel. You know what I mean? So for me, I understand that not everyone is responsible for every section of their audience. That's too much responsibility. But as they have to say something, hopefully. Hopefully, right? So I personally, if I was Sniper Wolf, I would say something like, hey, she's not copying me. But then Sniper Wolf would have to admit she's the one copying her. You know what I'm saying? Though she could also just say like, eh, everyone in this bubble like does the thumbnails the same way. I'll change mine more. I'll add like a different color or something. Basically, like a because I'm sorry, who just covered this in the video essay bubble where they're like everyone's thumbnail looks literally the same. It's very common. It's so your audience knows what you're selling. But I can see in this instance how it's a little bit too close to home. Trend started on TikTok of accusing you of copying her. And it became so it became like That's a crazy. way to trend on TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. What a nightmare. And it's it's, <laughs> it, it's been such a nightmare because I'm like, it's made me not want to like open my phone or log in or be a part of this job is stressful media bro. when at some point like this was like a safe place for me to come and escape reality. And now it became like hell. You, you log in and you're being tagged constantly in negative comparisons or where you're being accused I of, can't avoid of it. plagiarism. Yeah, it's like even if I try to avoid it, it will just pop up on my feed. I could not look at the comments, it will just pop up. <laughs> okay, what would I do in this situation? Because even I'm like not excited about how I handled some of the bridge burnings and stuff. Like. I wish we had talked it out. I wish I explained myself more, but also my audience got it. So like, what does it matter? But also it doesn't matter what you say. Their audience will never believe you because it, it doesn't pay and it's a fun to troll. So Sniper Wolf's audience, the ones who hate Azzy and don't want to change their mind won't. And then they would have to, they would have to de-pedestal their favorite, which is why, again, it is so weird as a content creator to purposely build a parasocial relationship with your audience enough that they like back you up no matter what, right? It's so weird. And at the same time, it's just really natural when you have a large audience. There's always going to be those people that are rooting for you no matter what. So Sniper Wolf is kind of her only obligation in this scenario then is not to get rid of all the weirdos, is to make enough statements out loud to get to the more rational part of her audience that can listen. But if she doesn't do that, then that's the red flag right? The red flag is not, is ignoring the fact that you have influence over a very toxic part of your audience. Look, no one's afraid of a big audience. That's just chilling. You're only afraid of the toxic part, the part that shows up to your house, the part that doxes the family, the part that kills the YouTuber like Christina Grimmie. Like you're not afraid of an audience unless you think someone in that audience is going to do something to you. So as the content creator for your own conscience, you should say to people like, Hey, like, please be careful. Like, don't do this. Like, treat people with, like, with dignity. You know what I mean? So, you know what I mean? 
It is one of those things where I feel like Sniper Wolf got to say something. Non-stop. I believe that you would not weaponize your fan base in that that same way. No. Like my assessment of your personality from having met you in person was that. Ooh, which is again, another one of the compliments that I get on my stream is people will tell us, oh, Brittany's audience is so nice to everybody. They're like really nice to the guests, but other people will just like tear apart their guests like in the comments. It's about the the company you keep, right? It's about what you promote on your channel. I don't I don't see I don't know Azzy at all. Like I really just learned about her today. I don't think she would do this either, but you never know. But Sniper Wolf, I mean, obviously, right? She's toxic AF. You you're not a uh, a high conflict person. Yeah. You don't like to wade into drama. Like if uh, if a little bit of gossip starts to happen between YouTubers, like you know, you're gonna be the one to be like. Oh, that's funny. All right. Well, I'm going to go get a drink. I'll be right back. Like you, you don't feed off of negativity in that way. Yeah. You kind of, yeah, you, you float from sort of like positive emotion to positive emotion and you don't, you don't spiral into negativity. And I know what that looks like because I, ha I have friends. <laughs> oh my God. Shadow beam. Sneeko did test our patience though. That sweet boy needs so much growing to do. Is that there's some drama going on. Colossal would walk into my office and be like, you know, what's cooking? Let me know. Like, <laughs> what's the deal? Tell me, fill me in. Or Keemstar would be like, tell me everything right now. And he would, you would have his full attention. Yeah. The more negative, the better. But, you know, with you, it's not that way. Now, Sniper Wolf, she's truly like a doppelganger. Congratulations. You have won the doppelganger challenge. Oh, no. <laughs> she's copied everything from you except for like the honest, positive parts of your personality. For example, if I were to ask you, do you Facetune your pictures before you put them on Instagram? <laughs> What's your answer to that? I, I have, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Other people can see more than you can. That's the thing, like nobody's fooling anybody. Mm. Everybody's using it to touch themselves up to try to like present themselves. Ooh, Stephanie says the fact that she's taking this long to speak out shows she doesn't want the drama. Can I tell you? Do you guys think I'm low conflict or high conflict? Cause like my partner and I had to have a very serious conversation about this. How, like, I avoid conflict. I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to be, like, cruel to people. I want us to be honest, but people aren't always ready to face themselves. I also take my time talking about things, and it makes people think that I'm like, oh, why'd you wait so long? Why'd you wait for so long? Because honestly, like, you don't want the conflict. So you're like, I can't handle it. I don't want to deal with it. Like, these people are, like, lying about you. And you're like, oh, my God. Like, how do I even start to dismantle this this thing? It gives me so much anxiety dealing with conflict because I've had to deal with it my whole life. And I'm like, can we please just like leave me alone? Jesus Christ. So it was really difficult. And so for me, um, I, when I decide to do it, I'm like trying to stand up for myself. But no matter when you do it, it's always like the wrong time for a part of the audience. Right. And so I can see her waiting for so long because it's really annoying. But then at some point you just got to say something. Right. Low, 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 low. Perceive you as low conflict who likes high conflict topics. True. Definitely low. You even yell at your audience with so much love. <laughs> Thank you. Low con conflict, but engaging with destiny was high conflict yellow flag. <laughs> that was like so hard for me. It's so hard for me now because I'm like, how do I handle this situation? I feel it's so such a confusing situation to have somebody like make thumbnails, tell his whole audience this thing happened. People have an idea of what they think happened. I'm like, none of that happened. Like, I don't even understand what's going on. And then you, people hold him in like such a high regard, even though I don't know why, if you consider like the way he's like misused information, but at the same time I get it because he's really good with his words. So like, who cares? It's like the same thing. It's like, I'm not trying to dismantle. I'm not trying to like take this guy off the platform. I'm just trying to say like, hey, uh, I see some problems and like you can hate me or not, but like I didn't fucking burn this bridge. And him painting it like Britney betrayed me is like so dishonest in the same way like Sniper Wolf painting this like she copied her is so dishonest. It's like, why are you doing that? Why are you in? Why? And then they won't even face it. Sniper Wolf is probably never going to talk about this. She's never going to own up to this. Just like Steven's never going to own up to what he did, which is fine. But that's the point for us is to be like, ooh, who are we going to hang out with? The person that calls themselves out on like the ways they fucked up. Or the person who isn't. And Sniper Wolf's not going to do it. And if she does, amazing. That would, would that not break the internet if Sniper Wolf literally got on the internet and was like, guys, I've been a fucked up person for many years. And I'm going to, I'm going to fix it. You know, it's like, do we believe her in the same way? Like, do we believe Boogie? 
do we believe Boogie? Do we think Boogie's going to change? And we're all just waiting to see if it happens. You know? Us the best version of themselves without becoming fraudulent about mm. it. The reason that I know that you've used Facetune is that that photo you took when when we met at VidCon, I could tell that I'd like my skin had never looked that fresh since I was like she Facetuned somebody else. You know, junior year in high school or something. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate <laughs> it. Wait, ooh, how do you feel about Facetuning people's photos that didn't consent to being Facetuned? and post it on Instagram. I think that's weird. I think I would have to ask my friend's permission, like, hey, can I Facetune your skin? Like, I would want to ask, I think, permission to do that. You know what I mean? I don't think I'd feel comfortable with that. Thumbnails, I do edit, obviously, to make them pop and stuff. But I don't know if I could do that on someone's Instagram. Interesting. And even when he asked her, do you Facetune? She goes, yeah, I've done it. It's like she didn't even want to admit, like, I fully love Facetune and I do it all the time. Hmm, that's interesting. Hmm, interesting. I don't know when you have the energy to walk into someone's home and say, let me slap you. You might be a little low key, minor, bit high conflict. Stop. That was for the views, guys. I literally saw comments that were like slap destiny. And I was like, oh, OK, like I was there to make a moment. I was there for work. I don't know why anyone thought I was in Miami for anything but work. The only parts that weren't about work were when we hung out one-on-one, -on -one, which I never hung out with Destiny one-on-one. -on -one. I only hung out with Abba and Melina one-on-one. -on -one. So I was there for work. I was in that live stream for work. We are collaborators. We are streamers. Obviously, that's not us being like friendly. We're talking to each other as content creators. So yeah, I was going to slap the shit out of anybody for clicks, bro. Let's go. That's my forte. I should have slapped them harder. Um, What's worse, only face tuning yourself or turning everyone? Mm. Or tuning everyone? That's the question. Because if you tune yourself, you're going to stand out. But then if you don't tune just to yourself, you're actually tuning someone else and letting them get presented in a different way. You know what I mean? I don't know. And then what if the other person feels ugly next to you now? This reminds me of the picture of Kris Jenner posted of her and Gordy, Gordon Ramsay face tuned like crazy. And then Gordon posts the original, not edited. <laughs> Stop. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go look for that. <laughs> but I could tell that you probably just did the basic, like you hit um, auto. I knew that you used Facetune and I think everybody does. And if somebody asks you, do you use Facetune? It's not a surprise to hear yes. And it's not that embarrassing to admit that you Okay, hold on. Oh, damn, gorgeous, darling. Honestly, both look pretty good, but also the more natural one looks... Okay, I get why she facetuned it because she does look more like her quote unquote self with it unfacetuned or no, with it facetuned because that's how she presents herself everywhere. But Gordon looks crazy facetuned. He looks literally crazy facetuned. Gordon looks better not facetuned, but she looks better facetuned because that's her that, that's her brand. She should have just facetuned herself in this situation. I bet he wouldn't have done that if she just facetuned herself or maybe he would have. That's pretty funny let me tell you that is a pretty funny oh man i'm dying that's pretty great oh man that's funny oh oh i gotta fix the whole ass window now hold on i reshaped it wrong you do it's no it's totally normal and does she still feel embarrassed about handle it though? that and just did is completely different than sniper wolf i don't photoshop any of my pics i don't have time there's no way she there's no way. She gets violently angry about it, denies that she does. But I think that it's more so. Why is Azzy so violent. nervous about this? I, I actually think I, I actually would say that Azzy didn't fully own that she photoshopped. She felt a little nervous, like the way she reacted. But there's no way that Sniper Wolf doesn't use a filter or something. She looks photoshopped as hell right here. My pics. I don't have time for that. She gets does she not consider photo tune or t uh um. Does she not consider, um, what's this called? Face tuning Photoshop? It's violently angry about it, denies that she does. But I think that it's more so like, um, even if that was the case, if people like, we don't owe anybody anything and we don't have to tell people about like our, about our bodies or our personal lives. Ooh. It's, I mean, I don't think people should lie about it. I think they should just say, I don't want to answer that question.
uh, personally, if they don't want to talk about it. But to attack other people about it, that's where I, that's what bothers me the most about it. You're perfectly within your rights. If somebody asks you, do you Facetune? To just ignore the question, particularly if it's just like a random pot shot. You don't have to like every time someone asks you an, a, an editing question in any regards, you don't have to answer it. But what she did that went above and beyond and like where it got my attention. One of the reasons why I even I felt justified in, in making that video was that she was attacking people for the thing that I could tell she was doing. The first thing they say is why. Girl people for the thing that i could tell she was doing the first thing what are you dumb stupid or dumb do we really think this fucking shit isn't edited bro do we really think this isn't edited how do we feel about the interviewer putting her on the spot to answer that question I loved it, but I think it made her feel anxious. Bro, do we really think this isn't edited, though? thing they say is... Wild. Why does she look like a cartoon? Mm -hmm. One of your first negative interactions with her, she was trying to say that she does not edit her photos, and you do. Yeah. Which, it's just, why even go there? Um, why should I care if someone is lying to hundreds of thousands of subscribers? Um... It's none of my business. I should just focus on myself and I will. She doesn't want to be compared positively with you. She wants to crush you. Sniper Wolf has a major trauma, bros. Am I crazy? I feel like Sniper Wolf has a complex. Maybe she is antisocial personality disorder. I don't think so. Maybe she's maybe she's just really low on empathy. Like maybe she's really low on empathy and she has no values, right? It doesn't mean she's without empathy. Maybe she just has like none or little to none. You know what I mean? Yeah, I could not imagine. I couldn't imagine. How does she, what does she do to justify it? I mean, we all have cognitive dissonance, right? There's a lot of people who justify a lot of things, you know, blah, blah, blah. How does she sleep at night, girl? You and be the only one getting the compliment. Me versus 10 other girls. Anyways, I commented on this girl. I was like, you look so retarded or something. One pic was a super filtered pic of the girl. Oh, did I mention she had too much Photoshop and filter? I was just that. And then they're saying, I'm fake. Um, but the chubby girls posting pics in their bra and undies. It's greedy. She wants it all. She wants to dominate that comparison and have no peer. Love people love her a lot of people want to be like her but some people literally want to be her a person who isn't ariana grande but dresses like her and tries to act like her what about sniper wolf boo is that a thing unfortunately it is i could throw a lot of shade in this video oh my god i didn't realize how much i hate the way she talks jesus <sighs> but i'm not we're gonna stick to ariana today Imagine that you're like a Taylor Swift fan and you find out that there's another popular pop singer in Canada who Taylor Swift has been copying her, the titles of her songs from, the outfits she wears on stage, the lyrics of her songs. But it's like a cheap knockoff. That's what I think of. Cheap knockoff. Because essentially that's what it is. When you're trying to be somebody, you're not. Just all kinds of- I mean, of I agree with sniper wolf then why is she doing it bro Ooh, the way she's twisting the narrative makes me want to twist her hair details about her in life like game. if there's a if there's a photo shoot some of the items in the room of taylor swift's mm -hmm. place are matching the house that she saw that uh that this pop star posted on instagram what i think is a little sus is when people like straight up copy somebody the way they talk the things they wear they okay first of all every fucking room looks like this Oh, anime stuff in the back. Everyone looks the same. I don't know why we're not pretending like we don't also mimic trends. Like, why are people pretending? Why? I'm so sick of the performative authenticity on the internet. I am so sick of everyone being like, I am super authentic. We all have the same fucking backgrounds. We all use lighting that we wouldn't put there. We all have tables that don't even belong there. We all have anime shit we put in the background or video game shit we put in the background. We only start playing or liking stuff because of streams. Not everybody, obviously. But... 
or we amplify the things we like already to build an audience off of that audience. Like, come on. Like, why is Sniper Wolf pretending like her room doesn't generically look like every other fucking gamer room? Like, as if it's so unique to have a bunch of gaming posters and toys and stuff behind you. Come on, bro. Hair, whatever. And, like, completely deny it. Sleep. How bizarre that would be if you found out that a really famous, more successful pop star who you'd been following was body snatching or... Yeah, everyone buys everything off Amazon. Literally, like... TikTok had the same controversy, which I totally get. People be copying, people be copying. I get it. It's annoying. But also, like, everyone got a BBL also when it was trending. What were you guys doing? Just admit you like trends, bro. Sniper Wolf was basically copying the thumbnails because she knew it would be trendy. And she's right. It was. That side of YouTube, they all, all their, t all their thumbnails and everything looks the fucking same. Why are we pretending like everyone's unique? Cloning or skinwalking someone else there's nothing to be afraid of a lot of those people like my discord just shared a video called exposing victorian influencers who facetune their photos and how like qu the concept of facetuning is actually like legendary it is not modern or new and i believe it everybody be faking everything for centuries to talk mad shit about me so that's how it all started. You love somebody so much, you think they're perfect in every way, and you decide to copy their every move. Can't relate. That's what's happened with Sniper Wolf and Azzy Wolf. <laughs> Azzy Wolf! What have I done? Wow. That's what's happened with Sniper <laughs> Wolf <laughs> and Azzy. With Azra. I can't believe I said that. I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Can you I imagine? Fight. That would be even worse. You know, I, I like Pokemon at, like myself. I don't take things too seriously. Like, I, I that's one thing. Like this. Can... What's this filter, right? There's something going on. It's like a glow filter. What's the filter on her camera right now? It's like a glow, a blue. It's like a... People always say to me. Look like... at her face. Like, this is obviously, like, do you see how her skin is fuzzed out? Like, this part of her face isn't even in focus. So, like, she's obviously doing something right now, right? You're really good at taking criticism. And it's, I find that it is, I don't know, I feel like that's how you can grow and it's not something to be like mad about. It's something. Like there's there's a filter on this like lens thing. Thing to appreciate. People are so free. See, to speak this their perfect mind. example. Look, look at what just happened here. Like she just took like a, a, an outburst of tension and just turned it into a positive moment. She took just the slightest bit of negative energy and tried to find a way to turn it into something positive. <laughs> Sniper Wolf didn't copy the name Wolf from Azzy. Azzy Land is the name of your channel. Yeah. When you promise to only eat one cookie, I'm gonna be good tonight. I'm only gonna eat one Oreo. That's it. This person should be a lawyer. He's like. You said one cookie, the only one, I just one, that's it. I didn't know how much she'd copied from you. When I made my video about Sniper Wolf, there was a voice that I couldn't quite place what it was and I started to make a montage out of it. The weird baby talk Ebonics that she's adopted for YouTube. I'm just reaching for some name for it and I call it baby talk Ebonics. And because I couldn't figure out what this was. The Toronto accent gotta be the most autistic accent of all time. Sounds like a 10 year old mentally disabled child who went to Jamaica for six months and picked up some of the lingo. Told the man them last time you didn't even bitch in for the spliff crow, so why do you. Damn, isn't this the same accent Abba and Preach were just making fun of? Yo, what's good, fam? I try my best not to speak with a Toronto accent, but sometimes it depends on who I'm talking to. Yo, fam, I'm chilling, fam, you're good. And what I don't like is if the business is true. But who is you? You left your mom's in the hood? It makes no sense. I hate it. Well, I do it on a daily basis and see if I like it. You have money and you left your mom's there? That was their house. Yo, you're sick to my stomach, true. fam. But if it's not true, y'all telling me a wasp? It sounded like a yassified voice that also was mixed with a little bit of, um, of like a baby, but but it was like a foreign baby. So I wanted to attempt it. Golf ball. Golf ball. Wasp net. Wasp net. Cut in half. From some very naughty evil bees. And when I finally watched uh, some Azzy Land. Even the way she reacts. Okay, I'm starting to become anti azzy Not literally, but like this is a very, this feels like she must be really anxious. So she's like performing a bit, which I, I get. I perform to like remind myself that people are watching me. She must have been really nervous. But um, she isn't relaxed, which is making her come off interesting. But I'm not accusing her of anything. And content. I was like, there it is. 
That's the voice. We don't care what you are. We don't care if you're not even the same species. Wait, they got a house? Why are they so angry all the time? This girl does sound like her. She's trying to talk like her. And then she's gonna act surprised like, oh, they thought I was her? But you were inspired by her. And with Sniper Wolf, it was this bizarre mm. affectation that threw me off so much that I made a montage out of it. Like, what the hell is that impression? The Toronto accent gotta be the worst accent known to man. You lie. Yeah, I just want to know why people from Toronto sound like they're talking through their nose. Yeah, Shorty's just talking shit. And that's you. <laughs> I can tap into my voice when I get like excited. It's like a bunch of people who I went to school with and grew up around mm. talk like that. Boom. New bout. My parents are foreign and then I lived in Amsterdam for a bit. So it's kind of just been morphing over time. But the ironic thing is I wanted to separate, separate myself so much from Sniper Wolf that I started forcing myself to not talk like that. Cringe! Wait, she denied her own native accent just so she wouldn't be compared to Sniper Wolf even more? Hmm. And now I don't know how to talk like that anymore. I like forgot. Tragedy. That happens. She stole something from you and then like like wore it out so much that you quit it. Which brings me to one of my ideas. Hmm. So I think that you should set traps for her. Have you heard of the game Peggle? No. Should I? <laughs> Is this a joke? No, it's a real game. Okay. <laughs> it's one of the easiest, most passive Pegging? games in the world that requires no skill. Press a button. Congratulations, you win. Score, score. Like I win, I win, I win. <laughs> I'd say I was speechless, but I have one more thing to announce. Where's the fun? Where's the fun part? Peggle 2! Exactly. Imagine if you start playing that game, like competitively, and pretending that you're getting really good at it, and you're that you're like the number one ranked Peggle player in the world. That sounds like hell. It That's would so be. so boring. I'd rather, I'd rather play a game poorly and have fun and try to get better than, like, I don't know. But just for the sake of having Sniper Wolf, like, hire someone to fake her way to being the number one Peggle player in the world. Imagine if you decorate your entire room in, like, Babs Bunny, and you just start going, like, listen, I'm so into Babs Bunny. <laughs> like, I love that character. And you just wait for her to get, like, a little figurine of Babs Bunny. <laughs> Imagine in your new reaction content, if you start to say, Not the mama! From the show Dinosaurs. Oh, my You're God. I love that show. My favorite TikTok trend right now is that show showing up on my feed and me just realizing how wonderful it was. God, my childhood was so great. Listen, I... Don't think this is a good suggestion, but I th think he's making a joke. Obviously, I think it's kind of weird that she f decided not to use her own accent, but I get it. Um, I'm glad she stood up for herself and said something, though. I think that's really interesting. And look, now I know. And I think that's interesting. And it makes me go, ah, Sniper Wolf is crazy. But this is something that makes you crazy, right? It's trying to, like, convince an audience. Like, she's obsessed, bro. They're literally obsessed. Does that sound familiar? Again. When people make a whole career in like it's there's this line of content creator that's just like so self-focused, which is like fine. Again, it makes the views. It brings in the money. It's good capitalism. But when you paint everyone around you like they're obsessed, they're the crazy ones. I'm the only reasonable one. Dude, at some point it's you. And that's what Sniper Wolf does. Sniper Wolf is literally like. Everyone's crazy. Everyone's copying me. I'm the only one. And because she's big enough, people believe it. But this story is really interesting. The weird part is, is I wonder how much of Azzy wants to sort of be, be Sniper Wolf. I don't know. Because I don't know her and I don't want to say anything that's not true. But there's something about her that could just be anxiety, right? We don't know. But I think she should say something. I think she should stand up for herself. I wonder if she's just upset that she could have... Like, she's very popular, right? Ba -na 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 -na. Oh, um... Girl, I want to hear you fucking complain. She has 13 million subscribers. What? Girl, she has 13 million subscribers. Four years ago, one of her videos got 31 million views. Hold on. Where's her latest videos? 
Um, okay, so her videos have definitely died down. Okay, so she's not, she's doing okay. Like, she's definitely making enough money. But her videos have definitely died, I would say. One year ago, one year ago, one year ago, three months ago. Okay. Whoop. Whoop, 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 whoop. That's not how you spell, spell Sniper Wolf. Okay. Sniper Wolf's views since she's been demonetized. Let's scroll before the drama. Okay, 2 million, 1 million, 1 million, 1 million. So Sniper Wolf is definitely killing it, but has 34 million subscribers. So technically she's doing the same, really. Like, let's be real. She has 50% bigger audience and is doing basically, it's kind of like the same a little bit. I can't do math. It's kind of like the same. Um. Okay. But yeah, she has, we can X that out now. Oh, she has 14 or 13 million subscribers. Damn. Um, son, that's a lot, bro. So, okay. Hmm. Does she wish she was as popular as Sniper Wolf? Does she feel like she could have been a sniper if she spoke up sooner? Or does she not care? As he does not want the hate. And at this point, I think she just hates Sniper Wolf's image that wants to disassociate that to avoid the pain and hate. Maybe. Yeah, I think she definitely should stand up for herself. And I definitely think she should say something. And then eventually she should just like move on because like haters going to hate. Sniper Wolf's audience is going to bother her. But I definitely, I like 13 million subscribers. And I can understand if your videos are falling off and Sniper Wolf's isn't, it can feel like really frustrating. But I would definitely meditate about that and realize you don't matter and realize we're all going to die and to be grateful for where we are. You pulled up like uh, TikToks and you're watching something with a baby and you're just like, I'm the baby gotta love me and you just wait for her to say it i've actually like considered putting like a like a hidden watermark into into thumbnails to like see if, she, if like it well you've done more you've done more than consider it maybe leah if you're watching this you've copied something already that we set a trap is there anything that you're doing now or that you could be doing in the future that has its origins with me <laughs> you're too smart for this world <laughs> She's going to be worried. She should be worried about the thousands of videos. Like she probably doesn't even remember yeah. how many times she's copied you. How many times have you noticed that she's copied your thumbnails or a title or whatever? Did, did you ever bother to count them? Things that are like very obvious, like exact replicas, it's minimum like 50. But if you're not counting those with like up to 200. Ones where you've yeah. got her dead to rights, like yeah. for sure, 50. And then somewhere it's like maybe just coincidental, mm -hmm. but it's like partial copying. 200. Just kidding, that's not Sniper Wolf. I'm the real Sniper Wolf. This right here is a paid actress. She looks just like me. I think she has made her community obsessive about like copying and how wrong it is. And I see them like constantly attacking like other like creators. Wait, yeah, Stephanie said all she ever really needed to do though was make a thread of all the identical thumbnails with a date of uploaded highlighted with clips back and forth yeah like why didn't she make like a manifesto bro she needs she needs the she needs to be in the commentary section she should because right now this is fine her like doing this way but honestly see we started watching the podcast earlier and the podcast wasn't showing us enough of the evidence because it's a podcast i get it this video is better at it but the dilemma is like she should have made a video but then I think she didn't probably want to put it on her channel, but she should have made a rebuttal of like showing all the instances. You know what I mean? Creators who are like starting up when it's not, they're not even copying. It's like they're, they're playing the same game as somebody else. And I think that that's really toxic. And I think that if that's the case and everybody felt that way, nobody would do well on YouTube because the algorithm works mm. by like recommending people next to other people yeah. and it's working in unison and working as like a yeah. team and uh being a community so i don't think there's anything like necessarily wrong with like copying to a certain level and i think that it shouldn't be criminalized and it's just it's using copying to destroy people's careers and mm. make people's lives terrible like it's just it's gone further than that and there's like ill intent it's not it's, it's coming from an imposter syndrome. Yeah. It's coming from her knowing that um, just being racked with guilt yeah. about taking something from somebody else and then achieving a success with it that she didn't deserve. It's something that is bothering her. And so I've said this. It feels like both her and Sniper Wolf don't talk about each other 
but I wonder if she just made a video saying like finally talking about Sniper Wolf and made it obvious, but not like Jack. Jack's crazy, like normal and said, hey, like, I just feel like I want to make it clear, like for the record that I this is how I'm seeing it. Here are the examples. We're in the creator space. We make similar thumbnails, but obviously mine came first. And I just need everyone to take like a chill pill. But maybe she thinks it'd be so like it would sound crazy. But then she's using these guys to do it. So maybe there's some of that. You know what I mean? Again, I'm not, I have no problem with her standing up for herself. I feel like this is much more of a case than Rosanna had. Rosanna's case was so silly. Why did she even open her mouth? But this makes so much sense to me, right? But I also get it if you're getting hate. See, Rosanna wasn't getting hate. Nobody hated on Rosanna for getting third place and nobody knew. Like, with this girl, she's getting messages and TikToks made about her, right? She's getting like messages from people. That's when you can say, okay, now you can say something if you would like to address it, which I think would be reasonable. But I do wonder if she doesn't want to put it on her main channel because um, her main channel has nothing about it. And I wonder if that's a business decision. I don't know. I see before, but if I think about her as an animal, I think of her as a Siamese fighting fish. If you put it's so a Siamese fighting fish in a little bowl next to another one, what? the Siamese fighting fish will attack the glass until it beats its face to death. Yeah. If you put a Siamese fighting fish next to a mirror, even it'll attack the glass and beat itself. It'll ruin its face. Yeah. You know, sometimes I do that. Um, Rosanna didn't lose to Jake Paul. She won against Logan Paul, but Mr. Beast edited it to make it look like Logan won, not Jake. Public Unless I'm that's a different video. Oh, is that a different video? Did I miss that video? Whenever I see somebody that like has black hair and glasses, I'm like, whoa, she looks like Sniper Wolf. This is Sniper Wolf. Now you don't have, what? you're not that species of, of animal. You're not that <laughs> kind of fish, but she is. She can't abide just allowing you to exist in your own lane anymore and then stealing from you again. She's- What? Is the internet, what? Rosanna's claim was that she beat Jake Paul. That wasn't Rosanna's claim. Her claim was that she beat Logan Paul, which was true. Steals and then tries to destroy. Yeah, because I'm a- For the record, Rosanna wasn't lying. Mr. Beast edited that footage. It's obvious, like everyone, like there were multiple witnesses. The issue with Rosanna wasn't that she wasn't telling the truth. It was that she thought the truth mattered. That was the issue. Versus in this, this matters. This is fun because like, she has a standing here of Sniper Wolf allowing her audience to bully somebody else for misinformation, which is interesting. A walking proof of like what she's done in her head. I mean, I get lots of messages that people have been doing this to me. Like there's people that copy what I wear and even try to talk like me, which is I think creepy as fuck. Why would you want to talk like somebody else? Like why? Like y'all dislike yourself that much like- She tries to preemptively beat the allegations. Hey, I have a question. Which is interesting because that is a really interesting tactic, which could be fueled by drama or could be fueled by trauma. Ooh, is it drama or is it trauma? Say it with me. Is it drama or trauma? Is it drama or trauma? So Sniper Wolf is definitely not like healthy, happy, kind. Azzy seems like she's trying to be healthy and she's trying to remain happy, though she seems pretty sad right now. And she's definitely, I think, tried to be kind, but it's not, you know. Um... But is it drama or is it trauma? Is Sniper Wolf getting ahead of it because she's a tra traumatized child who's like trying to get ahead of the pain? Or is she a drama ho that's trying to get ahead of the trauma, uh, drama? If you think you look like me or know somebody who looks like me or even, you know, slightly resembles me, you know, dark hair, glasses. Oh, wow. That's fine as well. Okay. I want to see. Okay. Thanks. And that's something that I saw in J Station. Colossal and oh I discovered God, that J -Station, Station was stealing and we worked out the percentage of it. We took every piece of his content and cross- Wow, J Station was like a billion years ago. referenced it against other channels and then compared the dates. And today we can prove that over 59% of everything he ever uploaded was directly stolen from someone else Jesus. who had found success with it first. But then he would preemptively attack those hey wait but discord was a discord who said it where did i see that combo and someone said at least they're copying the successful thumbnails honestly i always wonder like what thumbnail and people even started copying mr beast's thumbnails and it really does work and, like it works and it makes you wonder if you want to be successful in this game should you be copying thumbnails is that actually what you should be doing like an info commercial should you be copying the formula right because like 
formulas work for a reason. Maybe I should do that for 10 days. I should find a popular YouTuber that like gives me permission to copy their thumbnails for two months to see if it works. Because <laughs> that's interesting, you know? Because like for me, I don't need much from a thumbnail to click on a video. Like I need very, I'm a very low tier consumer. I need very little effort in a thumbnail for me to click on it. You won't even, you don't even have to have a thumbnail. You could just have the generic picture that YouTube picks for you and I would click on your video. I am the worst person to judge if something's going to be viral because I'm like, I'll click on anything, bro. Creators and tell his audience with fake screenshots that that person was stealing videos from him. That's so twisted to like Photoshop the proof. She did something similar with you, though, in that video where she's accusing you of copying <gasps> from her. The red Sniper Wolf literally made a whole video. Why didn't Azzy respond right thumbnail. away? She scrolls down, but she didn't scroll down far enough to show that you'd done it first. Yeah. She hadn't gone as far as Photoshop a fake proof, but she showed them a fake scroll down through the content. It's mind games. It's like, whoa, uh, whoa, whoa. Shouldn't you just put big bobs in the thumbnail? I wish, I wish that worked, but you get it. You get a non committed audience. Unless you do it all the time. No, it's not a good audience to gather. Man, oh my gosh, that is so interesting. So Sniper Wolf, oh, she's so good. Oh, she's so bad. Oh, she's so good at being bad. So she preemptively got ahead of it, made a video, literally did her own manifesto. Oh, that's vile, bro. That's kind of vile, bro. She literally got ahead of it, made a victim video, made it look so. Oh, that's kind of. I'm kind of impressed. Like, a part of me is like, damn, I could never do this. I'm always kind of impressed with what people are willing to do because, like, I could never do this. But it's also kind of like, she's playing 4D chess, bro. Sniper Wolf is playing 4D chess. That's wild. So she she scroll, scrolled like right up until the point before you saw that I had also done a red thumbnail and then stopped. It's like, it's just, it's just twisted. Just as an FYI, this girl came up to me at an event and told me that I was her biggest inspiration. And that's really cool and I can totally see it. If you go to my videos and scroll all the way down, 10 months ago I started doing like funny text videos and I started doing the style of thumbnail 10 months ago too. And I made up this type of thumbnail. Here's oh, you made it up? Ago. You made it up? Oh, here's a thumbnail thing. Everyone puts red in their thumbnails because red's like a kitschy color. I chose purple and then I chose no text for a while because I was trying to like choose a thumbnail that was kind of less uh, needed it. But red actually does stand out. Red is one of the best colors to use in a thumbnail. It like makes the eye look even on like if you're scrolling, people notice red. And so it is interesting, but she literally will choose red. It's just good for marketing, but lots of people choose red, right? Listen to her. I made up this type of thumbnail. Girl, relax, girl. You hardly were the first. There's so no way. This type of thumbnail just became my thing, my style. Like my subscribers would know that they're my videos because of my style. If you go to her channel and scroll, you'll see that her first texting video was eight months ago. And then seven months ago, she started using the same kind of thumbnail that I was making. Pause. Now, I'm sorry to do this to you because this is such a stupid point. It's the same point being made over and over in tens of thousands of hate comments on Azzy's channel, pouring into her spam filter at this very second. So as petty as it is, let's deal with it now and correct the fake lore that Sniper Wolf retconned into her fan base. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, as you just heard, Leah's claim against Azzy entirely hinges on this I assertion this guy's voice too. that this is the earliest example of the precious red thumbnail text message combo. Now, several years have gone by and that video and the one next to it were deleted from YouTube. <gasps> I don't know why. Ooh. But we can tell from the context, even to this day, that it sat between this video and this video. Mm. April 15th, 2017 and April 18th, 2017. Okay, now okay, the screen okay. cap from SS Sniperfish conveniently stops. She scrolls all the way down to only July 3rd, 2017. Now, why did she stop there? Oh. Because had she kept scrolling, she would have found this. February 3rd, 2017. 
Look at that! Now Pegged. you might be saying, but nerds, what if Azzy is tricking us? What if Azzy tricked you? What if she changed the thumbnail after Sniper Wolf's oh, video to jam the thumb point, in earlier point, than Sniper point. Wolf's screen cap? I'm <laughs> losing my mind. No, there it is. Objection. Among us is standing. There it is. Seen in February 2017. Winner, Azzy Wolf. Now look. Damn, bro. No, this guy has the best voice ever. It literally makes me want to die. I hate this, like, I don't know what it's called. I hate it. I hate it so much. But great. I love this. Look at this. Beautiful. Like, Sniper Wolf is so playing 4D chess. She just perfectly scrolls and perfectly does things. Oh, she's such a bad person. I love it. Oh, my God. I only say I love it because she's paying the capitalist bubble so good. So, okay, again, I wish I was better at making money because I wish I could do these things to people. But I can't do these things to people because I think it's mean and it's not good. But, like, she's doing it and she's doing like you know what i'm saying like a part of me is like wow and she is killing it like the guy we're watching has nine hundred thousand subscribers sniper wolf has 30 million even as he has 14 million so i get it like i get wanting to follow like the capitalist like dark hole you know what i mean and and become this famous and popular and make this much money like a part of me wish i was this like i was this low empathy oh my god i would oh my god but at the same time, I can't do it. And I'm also glad I'm also not the kind of person that could do it in a way. Because, man, I'd be really lonely with all that money and no friends. How do people even trust Sniper Wolf? Like, how does she even have good relationships with people? Wow. Wow. Nick says Sniper was playing uh, sneaky, a sneaky, dirty game. So it was kind of clever for Azzy to wait until Sniper was big drama to come out. That's true. That's true. That's true. Man, she almost just kind of breaks the rules. That's how a lot of people get to the top. I swear to God. It's why they say there's no ethical billionaires, you know, because as much as we'd like to pretend there could be, it's like, what are you doing? What are you doing behind the closed doors? What are you doing? And even Mr. Beast, who, again, I'm fine with Mr. Beast, but I'm not surprised he edits his videos. I always thought he had. I literally always thought he did whatever it took to make a good video, even if it edited it out like the real winner. I never like he made a video once where he said, like, we almost had to scrap the whole project because the randos we had chosen just didn't react good for camera and it was going to be a bad video. So like, I think that if he's saying it, like I've watched hundreds of hours of Mr. Beast talked about his videos and how he does them. I'm like, yeah, we're in the capitalist game, but he's also trying to do good with his money and he's trying to do good things in general. So I'm like, okay, maybe it balances out, but also he's not, I don't think it's a lie unless you don't pay attention, but Sniper Wolf isn't just doing capitalism, which is fine. She's literally lying about the reputation of Azzy, which is not okay. She's literally painting a false narrative that I think is like super, super unethical in Britney world, in Britney bubble. Even if what Sniper Wolf had claimed was true <sighs> and it wasn't. Oh yeah. Well, I don't know much about that story, Abby, but I did hear that she did ghost a kid who had cancer. I don't know much about that story. I just heard about it. But yeah, if she really like did that for real, for real, like again, I don't, I've never seen a video proving it because I've never watched one, but I'm sure there is one. Then that's a great example of like, ma'am, ma'am. But even if it was, that would be nowhere near as crazy as plagiarizing a house tour. That's crazy. And getting flexed on by someone who's not even comfortable in their own skin, in their own dresses, looking in their own mirrors, in their own house. Forget plagiarism. Like, that is actual mental illness. And that's really cool, and I can totally see it. You wouldn't think someone could gaslight the whole planet from inside a tiny little fishbowl, but SS Sniperfish managed to do it. You like my fart? Boy, did she gas up millions of little wolf cubs with that one. Sniff it. Sniff it real good. Sniff my butt real good. Please continue. I do want to point out as well, the reason why this is also such a difficult thing to talk about is because of the, the whole way that reaction content works is we are reacting to what's the most viral on the internet. So right. the ideas are like, they're-, they're Oh my God, wait. This is why I never get more views because I always react. I know this. I'm just kidding. I always make videos saying like, oh, one day I'll look at trending and go to viral videos and make a video about it. And then I never do. <laughs> Although this is kind of trending, maybe. I don't know. It's not. That is what I should do. <sighs> I should do. Maybe I should have like an hour of the show that's just like the most trending, funny videos. And then I clip those. They're not our ideas. It's whatever's viral. It's. 
the whole internet's idea of what what is popular right right so like taking ownership of that doesn't work and it, then the problem is is the internet chose sniper wolf as the dominant they gave her the most views and give her the most love so the internet chooses the content that was viral and then the internet chooses which content creator they like the best to react to it and the internet has chosen sniper wolf and that's just the reality it wouldn't even matter if they they realized like she had copied a lot of your thumbnails and stuff because ultimately it's not about that it's the fact that people prefer to watch sniper wolf for some reason can i be honest with you can i be really real with you i think i might prefer to watch sniper wolf i don't even like her hold on let me let's let's test this theory out i could be wrong i could i could be very wrong here Let's watch an Azzy, uh, an Azzy video and see if she would hold our attention. Now, here's the dilemma. All these videos are very long. So I'm not sure what's the video that's closest to, uh, what would video would be the closest to like a Sniper Wolf video? Like I try viral clothing, um, wholesome people. We must protect at all costs. Nice editing. These kids are too much. Shock face. Um, look, she used the same face in both thumbnails. That's kind of interesting branding. Curse life hacks you should never try. Okay. Let's see. Okay, so he really made an invention to saw chips up Cute with makeup. a vacuum when he turns his head so that he doesn't oh, miss a second nice. without food. Honestly, kind of relatable. I'm always hungry too, bro. But this is dumb. Oh, she actually tries to build it. Okay. Missing AirPods are going? Do you think Apple Care covers this? Not only is this an unsatisfying slime, it's an expensive one. You know how expensive AirPods are? I should know because I keep losing them. <gasps> okay, I hated this, but now I love it because wait, I'm gonna share with you. But it went on my head. Imagine that each AirPod is playing its own song. <gasps> it would be like a beautiful abomination of a Bluetooth speaker. Oh yay, cute hairstyle tutorial. The woman was too stunned to speak. Oh no, what's happening? This better be good because homegirl is giving her some bangs. Okay, dude, a makeup brush? Let's just cut off 10 inches so we can use only one. And let's just cut off the front while we're at it. Was that necessary? <sighs> okay. 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 Okay, let's do this. Let's go to her most popular. Okay. Oh wow, she has a music video. Nice. I don't get copyrighted though. Um Oh, here's funny student text or whatever. Oh, here's the mystery box one. This Three. is a thumbnail that Sniper Wolf copied. Today I'm here with Gloom and we're doing the Don't Push the Mystery Box into the Pool Challenge! Why are you so sad? I'm scared. This is one of those ideas that like sounds really fun on paper, but you could actually get really hurt. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, we're gonna be in the boxes that we're pushing. <laughs> I hope you pick the wrong box. I hope I pick the say. right box. I don't want us to get hurt, but I want us to get pushed. I can't, I'm bored. Oh fuck, okay. Today, I'm gonna be predicting fashion trends, and I think I'm gonna be right, so. Here, check out her it. channel. Cartoon and anime fashion. These mischief red boots that blew up. They're like Astro Boy. They're everywhere, and they're impossible to take off. Like, I've literally seen people like. Who's Gloom? You guys know who that is? I don't know who that is. In a thunderstorm. Yo, is this real? seem to think that old people as he got style though i will say she's definitely like more stylish and interesting than uh sniper wolf 
I definitely like her fashion better. I wonder if that's the difference. Though Sniper Wolf, I assume, has a boy audience. And I feel like Azzy might have a more girl audience maybe because like boy audiences actually expect like low tier effort. They don't want this. Like boy audiences don't usually want like matching earrings and weird shirts and girl. This feels like a girl audience vibe. Sniper Wolf feels like a boy audience, which is like done up but simple. Need to get off of social media completely. Complete. But I like Azzy's style better. They're embarrassing better. themselves and embarrassing everybody else. Personally, I'm just kind of curious. Like, yeah, she is low energy and more subdued. I agree. I wonder if she, her being more quiet is also the issue. Is like boys want something like loud and and like Sniper Wolf. Ugh, Brit, this isn't this isn't your type of content, bro. I cannot. I literally. I this is so hard for me. Interesting. Okay. Okay. So just for context. Hello, friends. It's me. And today is Darman Monday, and we're going to be watching a video about two best friends who compete over one guy, breaking the number one rule of girl code. I can't believe you're turning 18 in a week. We have to make your party epic. Oh, I'm blocking people. It's like what I imagine a mouse to do before they see the cheese. My mom said I can get a DJ, mm. but I'm thinking we could just create our own playlist and use that money for something else. What do you think? That's so much smarter. Y'all are 18. Who got money for a DJ at their 18th birthday? Okay, this was a day ago. This is better commentary. So like if this isn't good enough for Jack, Jack can literally like watch a sunset. So let's go to something that's older than when Jack was throwing his tantrum. Uh... Let's go to like two months ago, one million views. Hello friends, it's me. So she starts off with music, zooming in, lighting. And today we're gonna be watching some cringy TikToks. Hands on your knees, Angelina Jolie. I'm sucking hands on the knees, Angelina Jolie. Hey, hands on the knees, Angelina Jolie. Hands on the knees. Okay, okay so a lot of editing. Hey, in public? Also, what are those? There's jeans, there's jorts, which are denim shorts. What is this? The genderwear? Is that a thing? It's a thing! It's a real thing! Not the genderwear! <laughs> I like how everybody in the background just minded their own business like, you know. Just another day in the New York subway. They seen it all. I'm sick and- Okay, it's a lot of editing. I'm tired girls. of some of you getting my character wrong. I am Naruto Uzumaki. I'm not any other anime character. Got it? <laughs> All right, whatever you say, One Punch Man. There ain't no way he actually gave mad over this. I'm okay, this was like two months ago. This is fine commentary jokes. Like, it's like literally, okay. Oh, I fucking hate Sniper Wolf. Just for the way she lied about Azzy. But also, like, okay, six months ago. Hello, friends, it's me. Today we're watching TikToks that feel illegal to watch. <laughs> Is this one of the microwaved eggs? You cannot microwave hard-boiled eggs. Oh my! Like you saw it on TikTok. You saw what was gonna happen. You didn't believe it for yourself. That's a whole explosion. I feel like- Okay, that's fine. Like all this commentary is fine. Oh my gosh, Jack is so much more annoying now. So the only issue we have with Sniper Wolf is not her content. It's fine. If that's her content, how is that not fine? The issue we have is the way she treated Azzy, but also- Azzy was never going to be as popular as Sniper Wolf. Not in comparison, like, she could have been, but the audience spoke. Like, that's the end of the story, right? So I don't think Azzy needs to worry about ever being as popular as Sniper Wolf, but I will say that Sniper Wolf is still playing a very specific game that I think is inauthentic, which is, like, dis like discrediting Azzy and talking bad and, you know, doing all her reputation stuff. I think that's really messed up. It's you can't like watch a movie and then take ownership of watching a movie. Yeah, it's like cosplay. It's a tribute. It's a copy. It's an homage to something that's coming from pop culture. Yeah. And even in cosplay, she was competitive with you and trying to say like you didn't belong in the community. <laughs> Basically, I had done a diva cosplay and it went viral on the on Red Gaming. And right? then a month later, I posted it again. On the same day that month, she posted a diva cosplay. Completely coincidental. I don't think she knew. Me. Everyone did diva. Everyone's done a diva cosplay. Everyone's done one. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I didn't know her. 
And but because I'd gone viral and she was already viral, uh, people started tagging me in her comments saying, oh, my God, you and Azalea should collab. You guys because we both posted the same day. So then I go to my ex at the time and I was like, oh, oh, my God, like somebody's everybody's tagging me in this girl's page. She seems really cool. She likes gaming. Like I could have another gamer friend. And he's like, that's sniper. Wolf. She's not going to want to collab with you. She hates women. And I was like, you're being a hater. Like, don't believe everything you see on the internet. Like, I was defending her. And then, lo and behold, later on on Twitter, she's like, don't compare me to girls who Photoshop their butts and their boobs and their waist to my photos or I don't know, something like that. It's, it's, that's like the whole thing with her. It's like she always wants to prove that she's real and someone else is fake. And it's like, can't we just all be real? No, yeah. we're not real. No, we're not real. What is that? Can we all just be real? No, we can all be entertainers. We can all be content creators. What is real? What is this like? Again, I hate performative authenticity. It's so overdone. It's so capitalism too, by the way, to like perform authenticity and be like, we're so real. Give me money. We're so real. 14 million subscribers. Bro, I'm so real. So I'm going to pick the most viral content to watch on YouTube so I know people are going to watch it. What That's what Jack's Films is trying to say in some way, which I think he should take a chill pill on. Which is like, what about authentic content creators? Nobody wants them, Jack. Small niche communities want them and that's where you belong. That's where we belong, okay? This idea that we're gonna have like 30 million subscribers making niche short films. Every time Noelle Miller makes a short film, it gets far less views than anything else. He talked about this. He's like, people say they want like organic, like authentic creation on YouTube, but they don't and the views show. He has enough subscribers that if enough of them really wanted them, they would watch it, but they don't. They want to watch funny reactions. They don't want to watch a short film, Noel. Even though Noel is very, very talented, people don't want to watch it. And I don't know why people have such a problem with this. And it's not authentic to be like, oh, yes, I authentically choose the most viral videos to react to to make, to make views. It's not about authenticity. It's about enjoying your humor at the content. I don't watch Noel and Cody because they're making quote unquote authentic content. I watch them because I like their reactions to the content I've already seen or not seen. You know what I mean? It's like, what? I watch Abin preach for comedy and insight. I watch commentary channels to see here. They're like, like Cinnamon Toast Ken because I want to hear his commentary as well as his dad jokes. Like, we watch people for the vibes, but again, I don't like her narrative of like, can we all be authentic? Like, no, not in your industry. You chose the most viral content, the most low tier brain dead content to react to, to get a child audience. And you're in competition with the queen of brain dead content. Where is your authenticity that you're brain dead? Like, no, don't own that. It's a so it's like a self report. Yeah. Things that she's yelling at somebody about usually is exactly hypocritical. Yeah. It's always that thing. It <laughs> it's is. always exactly that. It is. Gee, I wish there was a YouTuber that had a bunch of really good thumbnails that I can just go onto their page and steal. You can't steal. You can. I don't know about stealing thumbnails. Like, I get it. But again, if you're playing the business game, it's like an info commercial. It's like Costco and Sam's Club. Like, you just want to one-up each other in the same industry. It's called love and war and it's called work. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not even mad about it. If it's about work, I'm not mad about it, dude. Copy the thumbnails if you think they're fire. Just don't lie about people's reputations. That's what's shitty. It's like, why are you lying about people's reputations? I mean, same, but there's nothing wrong with it. Like you admit it, like, like you let people know that that's what you're doing. Who are they to stop you? Yeah, I guess the problem is denying it. This girl's faking her gameplay when she was faking her gameplay. She's a gamer, isn't she? Hence, girl gone gamer. And after 400,000, she hasn't even done a live commentary. Um, <laughs> her reactions were just so fake. It was not real. <laughs> She's obviously not the one getting her gameplay, which me and a lot of people knew obviously was fake. And sometimes like they, she'll snap over something that's not even something to be upset about. Like you showed in your video about her that somebody tweeted her saying, oh my God, like you look like Melanie. And it was obviously a compliment because uh, Melanie is like very beautiful. Pretty. Right? Obviously. And yeah. like she responded with saying like, yeah, but her boobs are fake or something. Dang. Sniper Wolf a uh, hater, bro. She's just like, um, she's not a pick me. Sniper Wolf is I'm better than you. Don't even compare me. She's probably just like some, she's probably high on the narcissism scale and she's probably low on the empathy scale. And then boom, she's good at business. 
she's just it's just like a she's like a she's just like a good combination of like what works really well with capitalism yeah and it just like it it there it, it was unnecessary the person wasn't insulting you it's flattering uh and then like sausage attacked every piece of that girl's body it was so terrible perfect hip to waist ratio no hip to waist ratio i had max reading that alien hands yeah. alien hands alien hands fat stomach my neighbors are seriously going to report me like i guarantee there's going to be some domestic abuse reports beautiful natural hair N not me beautiful hair nasty fake hair and that's exactly what happened with Jack Films. He tweeted the sunglass emoji at her and a thumbs up. It's like, I, I would have thought that was a compliment. If he's tweeted, if he tweeted that at me, I'd be like, I could just say it right back. I'd be like. Yeah, you don't be autistic, okay? Like, Jack Films obviously hates Sniper Wolf. Yeah, <laughs> like, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what is she talking about? Do you think Sniper Wolf getting a message from Jack Films? Wait, is this after he went after Sniper Wolf? But she knew because she sucked that she didn't deserve that kind of um, mm. promotion from YouTube. So she read a supportive emoji as an exposed yeah. emoji. Wait, what? I don't understand the context for this. I need proof. Oh, gee. Yeah, it's, it's wild. I'm thinking of exactly the same type of situation. If somebody pays me a compliment by saying... Now, right off the bat, I'm saying I assume this is a compliment because it's something that I can see is good. Yeah. So I, if somebody says... Uh, you and Captain Disillusion are the best editors on YouTube. I'll be like, thanks. And I hope he never sees my content because he is a better, uh, better at motion graphics than me. You know, he's, he'll see my editing and think that I'm leaving all sorts of sloppy little shit posty mistakes. And I am, you know, but I take that that's as a so compliment because that's a, <laughs> that's a great channel. You know, if someone's like you and Colossal are the best commentary channels, I'm like, thanks. I love his, con you know, like, that's mm. great to me. That's what I was wanting to yeah, yeah they're just pointing out that she's like um jealous and afraid she's gonna lose everything if she's nice to everybody and she's definitely yeah i agree Bray. she's definitely got a mean and girl um jealousy like energy for sure you know sweet dude says i would like to know why she does this like is it strictly for the business drama how personal is it for her she has to know how easy it is to prove that it's a lie so she confident and giddy well the dilemma when you have like really high narcissism is that you do have like grandeur and like a delusion. I mean, look at the Trumps. Like the Trumps are literally, they're going to jail, bro. And like even Trump himself has such an ego, is so high on his narcissism scale that he's just like so convinced it's not going to end badly for him. And I'm like, sometimes I think people who are convinced like it's never going to go bad for me are the people who are like genuinely willing to do the weirdest things because they just think it's always going to work for them. And I think for her, it's just kind of always worked for her. Which is fine to some extent, like for her to have that narrative because it's always worked. But yeah, these are probably the time that like it's not going to work as much, right? And I don't think it's going to matter too much to her base because again, and I hate to say this, I don't know why people don't understand this. You have to be aware of the audience you're curating. If you go for the most low tier audience, right? And that's kids, then you're going for people that are going to be um, easy to manipulate and move in a direction. And so Sniper Wolf was probably pretty smart to go for kids because they have the most money on YouTube and they probably will defend her and not care about drama. Or if they do, they're bored and want to do the TikTok trends, right? So there's that. Or you can get the um, kids who grow up to be losers and all they do is spend their life on the computer and make hate tweets about people. And then you can arm those people all together to just make hate campaigns against people. You know, or you can get people with actually networking um, connections and get you like kicked off platforms, right? So again, it's like, why do you go for this audience? And I think that's a reflection of who you are a little bit, like the audience you go for, unless it's strictly a job. So if Azzy is saying, I'm authentic and this is who I am, then you are a kid. If she says, oh, this is for business and I just went for the audience that like, I wanted the most, which was viral content, then she's also in it for capitalism. See, that's my dilemma with this. How can you be like, I'm an authentic YouTuber, so you're a woman in your 30s attracting children into your audience? How weird would it be, guys, if I was like, I make content for kids? Like, what? How old's Azzy? Azzy land age. She's 32 years old. Don't you think she's a little too old to have a child audience? Unless it's strictly for business. If it's strictly for business, 
then like all of this doesn't matter. You're both just being, you're just competing against the child audience. You wouldn't go to a book author and be like, you copied my book. You're all making the same books. You're just trying to see which kid likes your book the most, right? That's my only dilemma with this is like, if you're both going for kid audiences, then you're both in it for money. That's the only reason as an adult, you would try to attract children to your audience and watching viral content that's like shortly snipped and funny and exaggerated is for children audiences, right? So I don't know. There's something about this that just feels inauthentic. Um, though I will say speaking to character, it sounds like Azzy has a better character than Sniper Wolf. But I think Azzy too is having a cognitive dissonance with the reality of her situation. Here, mm -hmm. you know, I could because I like Colossal's content. I don't go, no, I'm the best. Like he can't do what I do. That would be coming from a place of knowing that you weren't that good. Yeah. You know, I, I would, ha I think I would really. Wait, wait, wait. Are we talking about 18 to 20 year, 21 year old kids? Or from my understanding, I could be wrong, but from my understanding, Sniper Wolf and Azzy have like children audiences, like Sneeko. Like Sneeko has a child audience, right? Hold on. Let me look up. I not believe. Well, it would be like, that's what I would feel like if someone else was editing my content for me, right? And I was pretending I'd edited it. Oh. Like if I had a guilty conscience where I knew that I wasn't even doing those things. Mm -hmm. I guess I get it now. So that's where she's coming from is this knowing that she's faked her way to where she is. Mm -hmm. I think the fact that she gets so angry about you is a real indication that her popularity is partly fake too. If you want more on this topic right now, there's a new episode of TBH where Azzy and I talk about Sniper Wolf with Clown mm. and Pyro and Dolan. In case you missed it, you can catch up on- Oh, so this is the podcast where they talk about it and that's what we were watching. Interesting. How do we feel about this? Like, um, do we still want to explore more into this subject matter? This podcast is an hour and 44 minutes long. I hate that their pictures aren't on the screen. It makes me want to watch less because I feel like in a visual, like only the guest is visual. That feels so weird to me. I don't know why it's weirding me out. Like it's making me uncomfortable that only she is forced to show her face. Like why isn't anyone else on screen? I think she kind of like will get defensive and then she'll like say an answer that like. Like she's just a bad person. Like it's not that deep, I think. I think I'm now I'm bored. Okay, so it's not that deep. Look, Sniper Wolf is high narcissism, low empathy probably. Like we all have narcissism with us. She's just really high on it. She's really egotistical. Fine. OK, um, she was really cruel. She misled people into believing that Azzy was someone she wasn't. And that's really messed up. She should, if she's a good person, make that clear to her audience. But she won't because she's not the best person. I don't think she's like evil, but I think she's like what I would call like micro bad. Like if we're going to use bad and good as terms, I would say she's more of a bad person than a good person. But for me, she's also very good at her job, which is capitalism. She's just like nasty about it. Right. She's a nasty businesswoman. And I think that's something that is important. Like I wouldn't want to do business with her. I wouldn't collab with Sniper Wolf. I wouldn't want to be associated with her because she's so nasty. Um, but to be fair, I also wouldn't want to be associated with a lot of people that I think are nasty in this sphere. I don't think Azzy is nasty at all. I think she's actually like probably really well intentioned. But I would also want to like poke her more and dismantle this idea of like we're real people like you know, when you cover viral content, again, it's not a big deal. I love it. Somebody's got to do it, right? But if you're covering viral content, then you're not like a content creator. You're a content creator who's entertaining people. You're like an entertainer, which is really great, but entertainers are performative. So authentic and entertainer, I feel like they don't go together. You know, I feel like they're like, I believe you, but I don't think it's really what you mean to say. Um, but then again, I don't believe in like authentic billionaires. So I, that's kind of my stance. Like if you get popular enough, then I don't know what authentic means. I don't know how you're authentic with 14 million subscribers. Who are all the weirdos following you if you are truly niche and truly niche does tend to be more authentic, but also sometimes just like unhinged. So it's kind of the irony of both, right? As a business creator, you want the biggest audience as an authentic YouTuber. You probably want a smaller audience because if you're, it's why larger audiences turn on you because they don't want you. They want what you're saying. They don't want you. If you're a smaller content creator, you're probably more likely to be more authentic. And like, I do, I think there is that correlation, but also as a YouTuber, you don't want to be a small YouTuber because you want to make money and have a career. 
it's very difficult. And not all content creators that are small are authentic. Some of them are just bad content creators, so they don't build their audience. And then some big content creators get lucky, but they don't maintain without having the thing that brings people back. So remember, like as much as we don't like JStation or any of those other people, um, a lot of them were kind of the top of their game at some point. And there was a reason for that, right? Like the audience wanted a part of it somehow. So yeah, with that said, um, I'm not going to watch any more of this. I'm kind of bored. Uh, I wish Azzy the best. I hope this helps with her reputation and the hate comments. But I, um, you know. Yeah, like Sniper Wolf's just ruthless. She's ruthlessly cruel, which is so unnecessary. But like, you know. It is what it is. Maybe YouTube will do something about it. I'm not sure that they need to, but I do think that they, because like lying about people on this platform is really common. So let's say they said, let's say YouTube set a standard and said, okay, we're going to hold account content creators accountable for lying about other content creators. What would that look like? Them getting involved in YouTuber beef. Like what would it look like? It would look mad crazy since everyone like, tells things about each other that isn't true some people build whole careers off of it so what what is that gonna look like right that's where I go to where as a business perspective the drama makes the most views look look at this everyone's like watching this story everyone's making a video about it I'm jumping on it it's trending I think it's interesting so you know she's unnecessarily competitive I agree with that sniper wolf yeah I agree with that so again, a part of me is like, man, so what? Like, what does this mean really? You know, what does it really mean for YouTube to get involved? Hmm, I don't know. I don't know, you know? We'll see what happens though. This is new, it's trending. Let's see how uh, Sniper Wolf handles it if she decides to talk about it. You know, that's what I'm curious about. In my head, in real life while I'm dead My belly's being fed and I'm okay I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah Sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, da, 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 da.